Welcome to Porcelain Peak, a strange and scary podcast dissecting all things horror and sci-fi. Here are your hosts, or what's left of them, Tone, John, and Anthony. Enjoy the trivia. Welcome back to season four of Porcelain Peak. This is the beginning of the final month of season four. Yeah, yeah and we are we are shaking things up now that we are out of Creature Camp by uh, covering a creature feature this week. <laughs> <laughs> hey, pretty much. Well, it was also a lineup. And... <laughs> Serendipity. Anyway, speaking of that, what we're going to be doing this week, we got a giant news dump because Comic Con just happened and a bunch of news came out from that. Additionally, we're going to play trivia. After that, we are going to be covering, with spoilers, Jordan Peele's Nope. So we'll kind of give you our thoughts at the beginning and then dive into that movie a little bit more. And then for our final cut, we are announcing the nominations for the second annual Todd Browning Awards. Yeah, 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 yeah. just fine-tuned just for you. Yeah. Uh, uh, It should be interesting with video format. Because we'll be able to do cool shit for the for the awards. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, cheesy confetti and shit and fireworks. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Hey, Dress up we'll, real nice. Yeah, we'll talk more about that when we get there, but let's go ahead and get started with that chop talk. Why don't you take my ass? Why don't you take my ass and fill it with news? <laughs> <laughs> Huey Lewis, maybe? <laughs> take my ass and fill it with Huey Lewis. <laughs> I know where he is. He's in your butt. <laughs> So the dentist uh, <laughs> last week, speaking, speaking of butts, uh, I was at the dentist last week and I was laying there and Huey Lewis came on and I was like, oh God, I'm about to get murdered. That's yeah. my initial thought anytime yeah. I hear Huey Lewis. Well, yeah, now. and then your I mean, dentist walks in, Paul! And, your dentist walks in and he's wearing all that blood, prote- <laughs> you know, like the coat and all that stuff protecting himself from the blood. <laughs> Chopped off. Yeah. <laughs> Why don't you take an axe and chop it open? Well, before we get into the... Crazy news, John Anthony. How are you, fellas? I'm doing well. Uh, I have inundated myself in the SDCC news cycle, which has been what hard kind of, to what, follow. What at kind times. of what kind of porno is that? Yeah, <laughs> SDCC news cycle. Yeah, I like them with those SDCCs. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna keep it PG and say it sounds like a time era. Sloppy doppy. Uh, Creature cocks. <laughs> wow. Ooh, nice. Save it for creature can. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the Comic Con news has been absolutely insane. Hard to keep up with all of it. I have done my fucking hardest to try to get this all. Real, you had compiled. a real superhero boner this whole week, though, right? Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. There's so much stuff, but we'll get into that in a minute. Well, yeah. Well, how are you? Uh, conversely, um, every day is a waking nightmare. Uh, <laughs> agony. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Literal Pure, agony. Yeah. I stare into the void. The void. Stares back at me, you know, the usual stuff. Classic. Yeah. Let's talk about the news. Yeah. Go for it. All right. Hit us us with that SDCC, my baby. So unlike literally every other publication, I... Hit us with your creature I I (laughs) compiled these into, like, sections based on the type of thing it's here for. Mm -hmm. So uh, The Walking Dead is the one that's right off the rip. Uh, The final season trailer um, was dropped. And then they're releasing Spoilers. the last, yeah, they're releasing the last <laughs> handful of episodes of the show entirety uh, in October. Oh, really? Yeah, so it's very soon, uh, but the show will then end. Um, but more or less, yeah, yeah. They they dropped a trailer for the Tales of the Walking Dead show that's supposed to be coming. Yeah, what out. what is that one? Do you know? No idea. At Walking Dead, with this many seasons, they're probably the Hoblin dead. Uh, apparently, it's supposed to have some carryover characters from the main series, but it's like, it's so fucking hard to keep track, especially considering they're also doing a Rick and Michonne uh, spinoff, which they announced during Comic-Con, uh, that apparently is supposed <laughs> yeah. to... It's Rick supposed to <laughs> Yeah, it's supposed to replace Morty. the previously announced uh, Rick Grimes films that were going to be released. So apparently, now they're just going to do a show with the two of them. The Walking Dead, it, it died a long time ago. 
Who cares? It has some moments, I will say. I I got back on the train Mm. relatively recently, and there were definitely parts that I enjoyed. But we talked about it a little bit off mic. Some of these announcements are disappointing because now we know that there's less stakes in the finale of the show that we've been following for 11 fucking years. So I feel like that's a disservice Mm. to people that have stuck with this show and been loyal to the show to some extent. Yeah. Eventually, I'll probably go back and just rewatch the entirety of the show when it's yeah. all available. But I mean, I'm, st- I, I checked out around the Negan era and like never had what like, year did the walking dead start? Right. Shit. It's been 11 years. So. Yeah. So 2012, 2013, somewhere in that. Territory. Oh, cause I was like, I was kind of thinking well, like they're trying 2010, I think AMC's got like they're longer than 11 years. Then I'm just, I was just wondering like how far into the Marvel cinematic universe stuff they we were when the walking dead came around because they've like just slowly evolved into having their own like walking dead averse averse yeah um and i guess like amc just now has I think that with fear them. is still on from my understanding like that's still going too yeah and i'm i'm curious to know like it must be what you're saying which is that they have a loyal fan base or something because i'm trying to think like where is the demand coming from for all of this spinoff walking dead material so even though their numbers are down from where they were at previously because there was no way that i mean they were the most watched show on television for a long time there's no way they were going to keep up those numbers uh throughout that time but even with their diminished returns they still are above are, like everything else that's on cable or whatever. Yeah, they're still they're still one of the high highest viewed shows because there are still people who are just kicking around. It's the same thing as it was for Game of Thrones. Everybody was disappointed with the last season and, or and the season before that, but it still was so highly watched and highly pirated that like they knew that there was still something there, even yeah. though the show wasn't great. Yeah. So then I think they've announced. I think we talked about it previously. They have a Negan, Maggie show. Mm-hmm. And there's another show that they announced that's European based. That's another character. Uh, I don't know if you have it on there, but I don't want to do sp- too many spoilers. But yeah. Another character, I guess, is going to be living on, which I was like, I really want you to kill that character. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, what else you got? All right. So uh, moving on next is Star Trek. Um, we'll briefly touch on that because I don't know if we've covered much of anything Star Trek related on the show aside from we talked Rathacon. about Rathacon. Um, so uh, Picard is getting a season three. Um, which and they're bringing shit. back all the old folks from mm-hmm. Next Gen. Nice, uh, okay. literally old folks. Apparently, they, they dropped old. dropped trailers for Lower Decks because that's getting a new season, and Strange New Worlds, which is also getting a new season. And apparently, there's going to be a crossover episode between the two. It's, which who's in Strange New Worlds? One isn't there. Two different shows, and one of them is connected to the movies. I thought <clears throat> that I don't know if. Discovery is that in that timeline with the movies, or if it's Strange just New World because is. it's also done by Alex Kurt, Kurtzman, who did who worked with J.J. Abrams on the Star Trek movies. I don't know if it's the vibe that carries over because I'm sure Picard is in the regular timeline. Mm-hmm. So I, well, no, I, I don't think it's Discovery. I think it's Strange New Worlds. I think it has it's the younger version of Chris Pine's mentor. Oh, Pike. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. pretty sure the one that Bruce Greenwood played in the yeah. movies. Yeah. Right. So I think it's him, young. From what I remember, I also heard that Shatner was like, fuck everybody. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so he said, so he was on record saying that the current state of Star Trek. But didn't he would say have, Gene Roddenberry would be he rolling, rolling in, his in his grave? Yeah. And he also said, which I fuck, agree with. He also said, fuck Star Wars, too. Oh, that's what he said. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, I, I wonder why, though. Like, what has Star Trek. Crotchety old people man. People are really into know. these shows, aren't they? Not people who are. Not Trekkers. Not Trekkers. Uh, it, it, it's done a really good job of getting people who are like, I just like sci-fi tv shit like i haven't watched these shows but i i watch red letter media and they do long ass reviews of picard and there are also people who for literally a decade have been talking about star trek or making star trek reviews of the movies back in the day um the plinket reviews did like all of the star trek movie reviews and all that shit anyway so i trust them as being like old fart star trek fans Mm -hmm. to tell me whether this new stuff is any good or not and apparently it just like spits on everything that the old show was about like thematically and all that in favor of giant crazy space battles and it's more in line with the abrams stuff in that respect and i think the abrams movies also got some flack from og trek fans for being too like action crazy lens flare and not like the more 
um, human drama, like the progress of the future and all that, like, the, you know, of, more of like a space soap opera. <laughs> yeah. Which is, it's like, you know, if you liked old Trek, then you're going to be more wanting that stuff. And they're at this point trying to make a new Star Trek universe that brings in new people. And it seems like they're doing a good enough job to have they're, all these they're... spinoffs, including a cartoon. Like, yeah, they're doing gangbusters at this point. And, and I think a lot of that is that they've made something that is more palatable by a general audience, general mm-hmm. audience stuff has to evolve too. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm not I have mad no about stake it. in the game, so yeah. I don't care either right. way. 100%. Because I'm yeah. same boat. I am. I can't inc- say fuck Star Wars, though. I am incredibly <laughs> casually, uh, you know, a fan of Star Trek. So I'm like, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Uh, but those are the things that, that are currently happening. Um, and then DC, um, they basically just the job. A question real quick about the Star Trek stuff. Why was Shatner there? Is he going to be back in the shows? No, he was just there to. Be yeah, there. he's he's there because he's an icon. He's allowed to oh. show up to anything. He and went know dressed it. as Michael Myers to disguise himself <laughs> during the, the convention. That looks familiar. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry. Go ahead, DC. Uh, DC. Uh, we had the Shazam: Fury of Gods trailer drop, um, oh. and then they're Black- making another one with mm-hmm. uh, Zachary. Yep. Yeah. Wow. Uh, and then uh, and with uh, what's his face directing? Pony Smasher is his YouTube name. David F. Sandberg. Oh, oh, <clears throat> love that guy. Yeah. Well, I love that short. From Lights Out. <laughs> yeah. um, and then uh, Black Adam uh, got its trailer, which I believe I we saw. Yeah. yeah. Um, and The Rock looks for any excuse to put on that suit and do press. So he b- did a big appearance, I saw. Where and he came out and there was like, lightning all over the place behind uh, him. And the audience booed him when he said that when the, he was asked by an audience member if uh, he would win in a fight against Superman. And he said, oh, I don't know. It depends on the Superman. Uh, basically not including anything about the possibility of there being any crossover with Henry Cavill. I think she also came out and said that basically the Snyderverse is over. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. But isn't the Flash movie supposed to be connected to that? Which doesn't make sense, right? Well, the Flash movie is going is supposed to be and who the fuck knows where that movie stands right now, but <laughs> there um Hold I'm on. Ezra Miller is probably getting arrested as we record this episode or something. <laughs> yeah. But um probably uh, the crimes of Grindelwald if I had to guess. Mm-hmm. But he uh that whole movie, I think, is supposed to be their way of disconnecting from the Snyderverse and and opening up all of the like Earth Two offshoot realities. Um, I've heard theories that because there are multiple Ezra Millers playing multiple versions of the Flash, like him playing multiple versions of it, that they might kill off the Snyder version and go off with one of these other versions that introduces us to the Batgirl Keaton multiverse thing that we're supposed to be getting into. So I don't know; it's all a mess. That would be a good time to do a couple of reshoots, have a different person play him in one of these other universes and then follow them around. Yeah. Yeah. I think at this point they've just sunk too much money and too much time into that movie to really do anything with it, except yeah, really put it, decent. put it out as, I hope it's scheduled. at least decent. I mean, we'll see. Um, but that's basically DC's entire, entire thing. Aside from, I'm sure there was plenty of comics news. Um, yeah. But I thought for a while Cavill was saying that he would like to come back and do a Man of Steel too. There was a huge, huge amount of buzz, which it was literally just I think I think it was a um, a Deadline article or something that said there's buzz saying that Henry Cavill might show up and announce a new Superman movie, and the internet, especially Twitter, um, which I'm chronically on, was obsessed with this idea that Henry Cavill was basically going to tear the roof off a of Comic Con and show up, you know, up in the sky and float down and say there's a new um there's a new superman movie with me which would be cool then there's this huge camp of people who say well if snyder's not involved i don't give a fuck which i think is a really shitty thing for this guy who obviously really cares about superman and wants to play the character and Mm -hmm. has kind of gotten shafted by the snyderverse being not a huge success like it would be nice if he could continue on with a different director and a different tone and maybe try to actually play superman for once in a movie try this tone he's a pretty good one yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know if I could make a it, Superman but... movie. Yeah. <laughs> I but... loved the first half of Man of Steel. It was when we got the Snyder end of it. <laughs> yeah. That threw me Anywho, off. the internet's just getting hyped up over literally nothing. Kind of shot DC's panel in the foot outside of Marvel also just announcing 10 million things. Mm. And um, DC could have easily had that. those two. They, they promised. They were like, this is what we're talking about. Shazam and Black Adam. They didn't promise anything else. They delivered exactly what they promised, but because Henry Cavill didn't show up, people over the internet were all like butthurt about it, which is probably why people booed Dwayne Johnson when he talked about this. That's probably why they asked the Superman thing is yeah. because they were expecting that he would be like, oh, well, you know who could really answer this question and then have Henry Cavill come he out. He just pulls Henry Cavill out of his pocket. <laughs> he probably could. That dude wears some big pants, I would imagine. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's 
it's tough. I mean, and there was also like some disappointment around Marvel's announcements as well, which I found kind of surprising because it's once again the internet got itself all up in arms expecting them to announce X Men joining uh, the MCU, which they will do at their own fucking pace. I think they also probably want it to be a surprise. Yeah. Like, well, wouldn't you rather just go watch one of these movies or one of these properties and then it just like somehow happened and you're like, oh shit, what just happened? There's also already mutants in three of the properties. They're, they've, well, two that they've put out so far and one that's coming out later this year. So yeah. it's like there they're, have been mutants already. Like they're already doing that. It's and happening. Who? Who? Remind me. Who? Who? Um, well, Xavier is in. Well, so I'm saying, so there's the mutant stuff that they hinted at in WandaVision. So at least one of those, I think, is it Maria, whatever? um, Uh, uh, Rambo. Rambo, yeah. Um, Is it Maria or Monica? I always forget which one's the mom and which one's the daughter. I think it's Maria is the one who we're following now. Anyway, she's supposed to be some sort of mutant. Oh, okay. Um, There's some mutant stuff in Miss Marvel. And I don't know if you finished that show, but there's some mutant stuff in Miss Marvel um, that is very much like mutants. And then Black Panther is supposed to have um, is supposed to introduce a mutant, which everybody is assuming is going to be the Submariner or Namor because he's in the trailer. Yeah, and he's a mutant in the comics, so mm-hmm. they're okay. all assuming that he will also be a mutant. Yeah, I mean, aren't the superheroes all kind of mutants to some extent? Don't you fucking say that, bro? You no. Know? See, the the internet apparently is up in arms because they're saying that that there's a very there's a very strong delineation between mutants and everything else. If you oh, are if okay. you are an X Men okay. fan, all right. yeah. If, I'm just I'm. I'm being facetious. Like I don't. Again, I don't have. A, I don't give a shit. Yeah, my. I, I don't have enough of a horse in this race to care in that regard. Like, if you want X Men movies? There are X Men movies. I've also, completely separated the MCU from the comics. Speaking of, and you can correct me if I'm wrong. Didn't they announce a new X Men cartoon? They did. It's one of. The, it's the very first thing so I have on cool. my list here. Yeah. So, um, we'll we'll jump into Marvel's announcements. Uh, so, uh, I have a small section here that is all animated stuff. So, yeah. they announced a season two for What If. Um, which is going to be coming out in 2023. Um, you mean the Emmy-nominated What If? Yeah, they're going to give a, an entire spinoff for Marvel Zombies because that was one of the episodes of What If. It's so it's going to get its own, like I said, they said gory, blood-filled uh, yeah. season of Marvel Zombies. That's great because um, I, we need more zombie stuff. Honestly. We need to push the adult stuff more, I think, for this franchise because they've kind of stayed away from it, but they're getting into some heavy territory, especially with Blade. Well, yeah. Daredevil. Can you imagine a watered down Blade? Well, uh, Disney Plus is now in a bunch of hot water because they put uh, Deadpool and. Oh, um, they did finally. Yeah, huh? they put Deadpool, they put Daredevil, they put um, Logan, they put a bunch of their R rated stuff on mm-hmm. Disney Plus. And of course, there's all kinds of articles about like parents are furious with Disney Plus because they made a promise this would only be good f- stuff for kids. And it's like fuck you they they want a library where you can watch all of their shit and some of their shit is r rated and if you don't want your kids watching it be a better parent and supervise them yeah or you can put set or, controls yeah put parental locks because uh, you, you can have your own account that has access to all that stuff mm-hmm. and you can lock that where you have to enter a password when you look when you go into it and you can also set parental locks on the accounts that they have yeah. access to so really that's on the people that's not yeah. on disney yeah they dumb stupid anyway uh, yeah so uh, it's it's X Men ninety seven. X Men ninety seven. That's coming out next year as well. Continuation of the show that we grew up. Yeah. So somebody tweet I think yesterday. If you started watching the um, the original animated series one like one episode I think a week, Mm -hmm. then you it would line up to like starting ninety seven when it comes out. I know what I'm doing. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) that's pretty sick. That's a that's a. I think that it's a it was a cool show. The animation wasn't super great. So I'm hoping they. You use a little more modern technology. Yeah, uh, I'm sure they will. But yeah, oh, I'm sure they'll they'll hire a bunch of animators and shaft them on pay and overwork them, like mm. like Disney always does. Like literally everything. Yeah, is that um, all the animation stuff? No. One last thing: uh, Spider Man Freshman Year coming mm. out in 2024 is supposed to feature uh, Charlie Cox's Daredevil. Um, mm-hmm. We do or Not don't Tom know. Holland yeah. Spider Man though, yeah. but uh, that cor- character. So Spider Man will be in it, but accor- according to Tom Holland, he won't be in it. Yeah, but is it supposed to be our Tom Holland's freshman year? So I, I've heard, you know what I mean. I've heard different things. Originally, I heard this was supposed to be about the freshman year of Tom Holland Spider Man in the MCU. Now I'm hearing people saying that they're disappointed because it turns out that it's not in canon with the rest of the MCU. And so, yes, they're bringing Charlie Cox in to play Daredevil, but it's not going to be the same Daredevil we've <laughs> seen in the TV shows. I f- who fucking knows? Yeah, we'll, I don't know. We'll find out. I'll probably watch it and fucking love it. Who if it's if it? it's 
you know, I my heart almost ex- like broke in two because Spectacular Spider-Man, my favorite Spider-Man show, which I mean, man, beating the '90s show is hard to do, uh, is on Netflix now, and they put that little banner on the on the tile that says new episodes, and I was like, no fucking way, they made another season of that show. They they didn't. It's just what Netflix puts on when they add like a new thing to their library. Uh, that's dumb. But that's like the the standard to beat. So if this show gets anywhere close to that. I'm in. Yeah. All, All right. Set. You want to start popping these off? Yeah. So <laughs> um, they announced that uh, that She-Hulk and Black Panther Wakanda Forever will be the end of Phase 4. So basically, 2022 will be the end of Phase 4. There won't be any additional Marvel content for the year. Kind of a boring phase, yeah? A lot of people are saying they're disappointed by this phase. It's really... I, I've we've been discussing it a lot about, like, is this kind of like a, a step down for Marvel? And it's kind of hard for me to remember, like like thinking of this in comparison to maybe like phase one as like being the parallel to like this new lead up yeah uh to like a next thanos level threat so this is like phase one two <laughs> yeah yes I i'm, I'm okay. comparing i'm thinking like well phase one had a lot of dud movies like or movies that were kind of like eh like first avenger isn't amazing it's a good movie thor is not fantastic Incredible they're about the Hulk same. Yeah, they're both middling. Okay, like there's a lot of just okay to middling movies, and then Iron Man is like the shining star of that. And then the event phase, and then the Avengers. So really, if you try to, and that's phase one. Yeah, yeah. And so if you tr- if I try to line them up that way, I'm like okay. And I think the big thing that we everybody was worried about point. is do they have a plan? And obviously, they with do. these announcements, they've outlined that there is a plan. This phase does seem a little directionless. Where I'm like. And that could be, know, maybe that could come geared from geared up so much to like here's the tesseract here's this stone here like we got a lot of little setups bits. yeah and so we haven't got <laughs> and maybe maybe we, we are we're not realizing know. it yeah. yeah yeah it could be that it all comes Hard together to in a way that we don't realize mm-hmm. also we weren't getting you know five TV shows and four movies or whatever like it, yeah. before um, it just feels like there's so much to ingest that it's too much. difficult to keep everything in check um, which isn't going to change for Phase 5 because Phase 5 was announced in its entirety alongside some hard release dates and some tentative release dates. Um, so uh, Quantumania will, will kick off Phase uh, Phase 5, um, which is coming out Sick. in uh, February of With 2023. With Kang as the main villain. Yeah. I saw that. Yeah, right on. One version of Kang. The and what? then one version of Kang. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. Loki's got different versions. And then uh, spring 2023, we're going to be getting Secret Invasion is a show. Um, it's supposed to follow uh, Fury, Fury and, Fury and uh, Ben Mendelsohn's uh, Tal- scroll, scroll Tass- character. Taslo? Talso? Mm-hmm. Something? Yeah. Uh, which I'm kind of stoked for that. I, we, we've been missing some Nick Fury in a lot yeah, of this. Yeah, what, what movie is it when it's revealed that Nick Fury wasn't Nick Fury the whole time? Uh, Far From Home. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because it's because he goes through the whole thing like talking to Spider Man right. about Mysterio, and then in the end it turns and out that's that the he's beginning of the third one. He's like Nick Fury's off world. Or yeah. Something. Okay. Yeah. Right. Um, and then uh, May fifth, twenty twenty three, we are getting Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Three, which is probably the thing I'm the most excited. And James about. Gunn has said is going to be the closeout to his run on Guardians of the Galaxy. It's going to be the conclusion of his like planned trilogy, and then he's not saying it's the end of Guardians, but he's going to pass it off to somebody else. It sounds like. I think what they've stated is that at that point, the characters that are in the current iteration of Guardians of the Galaxy will go their separate ways potentially. Hmm. Um, so that doesn't mean that they won't be involved in any other stories. It just means that that core group won't be the Guardians anymore. I also heard that uh, Zoe Saldana was there. Yes. And so I was like, oh, well, all right. Well, <laughs> spoilers, unless it's a flashback. N- from what I was like, I said, from what I've heard, it's the tw- it's the 2014 version or whatever the separate the separate timeline version is what supposed because in happen. Endgame they they the past version comes to travels with Thanos and then she meets up with Quint, oh, Quill and he's like right. yeah um, but and then, then why wasn't she just in the last movie because uh, I don't think she goes with them because she's not friends with them yeah I see okay because because okay. Quill's like hey I love you what's up and she slaps him yeah yeah or knees him in the balls or whatever all right well let's hope that's the case then in cop s- out though <laughs> yeah then in summer we're getting a show called Echo um spin off of Hawkeye yeah, yeah. Hawkeye. Hot guy. Hot guy. <laughs> <laughs> what are we? Are we gonna be able to make that joke when fucking Haley takes over? Uh, hawk, hot gal. Yeah. <laughs> hot gal. Hot gal. Hot gal. Which is a, a delicious uh, dim sum dish. 
I won't yeah. hurry up and do me so. <laughs> hmm. uh, then uh, season two of Loki comes out in summer of next year. Loki. Um, the Marvels comes out July 28th of next year. Blade comes out November 3rd of next the year. The Blade. Yeah. And then Ironheart is supposed to be, I believe it's a Disney Plus show that's going to be coming out. Yes, which is a spinoff from Wakanda, the, forever. Wakanda Forever. You yeah. see a little mm-hmm. glimpse of it in the trailer. Did you watch the trailer? Uh, I did, yes. Yeah, it was great. Gorgeous. Gorgeous yeah. trailer. Yeah. yeah. Cougar still got it. Mm-hmm. Um, Agatha, Coven of Chaos, which is okay. the thing that is being... Is cougar? Yeah, I thought you were talking cougar. about uh, who, who, play, who plays the mom. Um, Angela Bassett. Angela Bassett. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're like, cougar, cougar still got it. Cougar still got it. <laughs> there was an L in there. Come on. Uh, Agatha, Coven of Chaos comes out in winter. Do we want that? No. Uh, so pretty much the the whole internet is kind of up in arms like, like hey, you misconstrued the meme. Like you, you're take, doing a very tiny version of what uh, what Sony did with Morbius and just not understanding the Just meme. because we kind of liked a character in a show doesn't mean we need an entire fucking sideshow about that character, especially if it's not a character that I feel like is going to have any relevance to the larger picture about this universe. It's like just... If you want to require people to watch these shows in order to get what's going on in the movies, don't make so many shows. And they are they are leaning into that, as we saw with Doctor Strange. Mm-hmm. That movie yeah. is... You're going to start to lose the plot. Yeah. yeah. Um, Daredevil Born Again is coming out uh, in spring of 2024, which they announced is going to be the longest run, like longest episode count TV show they've released on the platform. Isn't it like 18 episodes? 18 episodes. Do we know if this is supposed to connect at all to his previous show or this is supposed to be like a brand new thing? I believe it is. So so it's, it's called Born Again, but I believe it is supposed to be the same character and I believe it's supposed to be Also with, and Vincent D'Onofrio is coming back as yeah. Kingpin, which we we saw him in Hawkeye. So, so I if we've got multiple carriers, but Kingpin. I think that's a hint of, of the tone they're going to try to go for with this. So I think it'll probably be a continuation of that but because it's called born again it'll be like maybe he's had some epiphany that he's it's it's some way to make the tone but who knows at this point i think they are also showing that they don't care about having r-rated gritty adult stuff on their platform they've said if they're doing a deadpool 3 that that it will be yeah and by releasing all of these things that are r-rated and kind of getting this all out of the way i think they're making headway for when they do come out with another daredevil show that's fucked up i wish they were doing more punisher dude What's his yeah, name? Was, was like so fucking good. In imagine that. how all of the rest Marathon? of those, like yeah. uh, all the rest of the actors from the other shows, feel where they're like, okay, you guys brought Daredevil in. Like, what about the rest of us? Well, I, yeah. I've, I mean, I, I've only watched little bits and pieces of any of the Netflix shows, which I know is a mistake on my part. But since it's available on Disney Plus, I will get my second opportunity I to think watch those. All miss. three seasons of Daredevil are fantastic. I've heard that Jessica and Jones was great. I've heard that Luke Cage was great. I've heard Luke that Luke Cage you, had his moments. I've heard that you can leave. Uh, um, don't watch Luke Cage it'll confuse you because it has Mahershala Ali and he's also playing Blade and that's God. just gonna fuck with your brain nah, I'm fine hey, uh, but I've heard you can leave Iron <laughs> Fist where, where they found him um, I and thought that, Punisher was fucking rad yeah I've heard Punisher brutal. was great yeah I never watched it yeah. I do like um, John Barenthal yeah, yeah. Um, so that he would be cool I wish that he would come back yeah so we'll see what happens I'm like I said I am very excited to see if they pull this off with him, and it gives me a lot of time to catch up on those shows. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that is something that it is my in my intention. Um, and then May third, twenty twenty four, Captain America: New World Order mm-hmm. with Anthony Mackie as Captain America, which I'm excited about. Yeah, I'm very excited about it as well. I hope the suit's a little better. I do too. Yeah, <laughs> suits a little cheesy. It's really goofy. Yeah. Well, I mean, if the the Thor suits are anything. Um, there are any indication of the direction they're going i think it's going to get even cartoonier yeah well i mean at some point depending Chris on who they get to helm this just too, like, like the helmet you know what i mean like that's for me that was the biggest part was the helmet yeah they've always had their hits and misses with costumes mm-hmm. you know, never, not always been perfect um and then uh 2024 we're getting thunderbolts which i'm gonna guess has something to do with thor um, I, no I think it's actually more of like a Suicide Squad type team oh, up movie. You're right. It really yeah. the description was like uh, villains work for the government, and I was like, well, that fucking sounds familiar. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I think like Red Hulk is on the team, who is Thunderbolt Ross. So I think that might be where oh, the yeah. name comes from. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Even though I think is is that William Hurt passed away recently, so they, unless they want to like go through I, all the work, God, I him ho- back. I hope they don't all do green that. Morphed, morphed talking I style. Hate that shit. So, but that's supposed to be the end of Ace of uh, Phase Five, um, and then Phase Six is supposed to kick off in November of 2024 Fantastic with Fantastic Four, the Fantastic Four. So, not I, I don't know, I, and maybe I'm wrong, but I felt like every phase 
before this kind of had big endings? Like, what was the end of Phase 2? Because obviously Phase 1 ended with Avengers. I think usually they've ended, they've ended with Avengers movies. And then Phase 2 was... Was it Ultron or was it something else? It was Ultron, but I think no. that... Uh, by comparison, I think that Captain America: New World Order is going to be the compar- comparable like option a Civil for that. War-esque, like Civil War esque. Oh, okay. And um, Thunderbolts is just kind of yeah, because that, that that always happens. You think that the end of the phase is going to be the big thing, and there's one extra thing that's not. I don't quite think our big. tiny brains can comprehend the scope and the scale of these Avengers movies that they announced. That's well, yeah, because the last couple of things that have been announced is that May 2nd, 2025 will be Avengers of the Kang Dynasty, which I'm sure will have a different name by the time it's released. Yeah, because um, that's then, terrible, but they just announced today is going to be directed by Dustin Daniel Cretton, who directed Shang-Chi and The Legend of the Ten Rings. Right. So cool and that then, they're keeping it in the family. And then no- November 7th of uh, uh, yeah, the six same months. year yeah, is going to be Avengers Secret Wars, which we've been talking about for a long time is the likely end conclusion of what they're calling the, end uh, the, the, the multiverse saga. Um, but that's supposed to be the last thing that they release. There's supposed to be two things that come out in between. Um, but those are the last, like the big things that they're doing. So for similar to infinity war and end game, it'll be basically like a, a big five hour movie or six hour part movie one, that's split into two. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But they left a lot of gaps and they basically showed here that, um, through each section, they have some additional content that they're planning on releasing, but that they have not announced yet because they want to keep some of the cards. And close that's to probably the best. where they're going to throw in the X Men. Yeah, would not doubt it for a second. I imagine the X Men will show up probably in one of these later movies in Phase Five, and will likely probably be a, a sizable part of of Fantastic Four. Yeah. Well, um, and where to find them? Of all of that stuff, <laughs> I was most interested in the things that had like tangible. Like, I was happy that we at least had a trailer to watch. I thought the Wakanda Forever trailer oh, was such gorgeous. It made trailer. me s- it go from basically zero interest in the movie to at least Literal being chills. interested in seeing which direction they go in. Um, I think the fact that a lot of it takes place in the ocean and underwater v- is weird that it has so many parallels to Avatar the new avatar coming out like even this a lot of the shots felt like that that also got um, a new trailer this week but i don't really care as much yeah we'll see it a million times in front of every movie we go see for the next six months or whatever but um that and then also the she hulk the new she hulk trailer um had a little uh, daredevil shows up at the end of it yeah oh, cool a couple um, of attorneys talking shop yeah so think. everybody was like well i mean it's an attorney show matt murdoch should show up and they tease that he does with a new costume of some sort the trailer didn't do anything for me for she hulk i mean so, I, I don't know yeah maybe i'm not the target audience. she is going to be a fourth wall breaking character so they'll be introducing that with her rather than deadpool into the mcu which will be um i may be interesting to see if they execute it properly but um dip the toe yeah <laughs> Uh, lots of crazy stuff we'll see how much of that actually pans out in the way that they set it out we've obviously seen them make schedules and then have them completely yeah. fall apart and when go, COVID-2 hits diff- uh, it'll be a COVID-2. whole different story I think we're on like yeah. COVID-7 at this point Jesus. oh it's all about monkey pox now bro <laughs> super pox anywho I'm not talking about the swine flu I'm talking about the turtle flu <laughs> let's talk about some different shit that doesn't have to do with superheroes shall we yeah we- let me take you over to a little place I like to call Fang Alley, and I'm your host, the Suck Man. I, I like the spice up. I hit him with <laughs> so I hit him with uh, with Fang Alley as like because he's going to talk about some vampire shit. Spoiler alert! Um, but I hit him with Fang Alley today, and I was like starring in it, you know, uh, Internet Darling Anthony and and the Suck Man. I feel like it's a, it's <laughs> the a better suck man. It's a better iteration of that. Tonight, listeners, we're doing some hood bat shit. So. Um, We've been talking about it for years at this point. That this is the next. It's going to be the next back. wave. Yeah, yeah, that that zombies will be out, and this will. And replace let it. me tell you, folks, vampires are coming back in a big way. Horn. Uh, yeah. So AMC um, has their interview with the Vampire Show that is coming out. Did I watched watch the trailer? trailer for this. I did. Yep. Um, I was curious the whole time about whether we were looking at uh, Lestat and is it Louis. Yes, it, and that is and exactly that is what what's is. going on. Yeah. So it is just a, it is a, a modern modern day in the flash forwards to the interview. You know, set back in fancy frock coat times. I kind of wish that they would have just done like a Vampire Chronicles. 
mm-hmm. and gone through all of Anne Rice's stuff. And I'm, maybe I'm wondering if that's what they'll end up doing with that's more seasons. That's probably their plan. Yeah, yeah, but they wanted maybe that just name recognition. Several Anne Rice's, whatever. But um, something that I did like in this trailer, overall the vibe of it, uh, vibe of it felt a little bit too like CW Vampire mm-hmm. Diaries mm-hmm. drama to yeah, me, especially yeah, compared yeah. to some of the other stuff that Vampire I watched Vampire Diaries-esque. But I do like that they're obviously pushing some of the the like social stuff that the original story maybe at the time period wasn't able to push. Like obviously having the Louis character be a black man, mm-hmm. you know, and having his the time period and him being a black man in that time period play into the drama of the show. Also having the Lestat and Louis relationship be pretty overtly homosexual. Yeah. Um, is cool to see because everybody, you know, talks about like, oh, interview with the vampire, they're gay for each other. And it's kind of like heavily implied throughout yeah. this they is were just doing like, a nope. ton of math yeah in this it's like nope they fucking and um <laughs> it's causing problems so uh yeah i'll still check it out it's amc so yeah. i'm um, interested for sure i mean i think the big thing is that it's got big shoes to fill uh the 94 film is is a classic uh, i mean it's probably top the 10 best vampire movies i it's top two for me <laughs> i mean dracula is the only thing i think that even competes yeah, speaking of Dracula, uh, watched the trailer for a new Sony film, which immediately I was like, ugh, Sony. Uh, a film that I am pretty sure originally was called Brides of Dracula because that is the, the basic idea of the movie, but now it's called The Invitation, which, which drives is me so insane because stupid. there's a very good movie that we've talked about on the show called The Invitation. Not that it's a crime to call your your movie the same thing as a million other things. Host, host. Cronenberg. Yeah. <laughs> Crimes that he just, yeah. But I don't feel like the trailer lets you believe that it's a Dracula story. And uh, there was only one part where he was like, oh, this is Harker. Yeah. He's talking on the phone. And I was like, oh, So my thought is that they were like, change the title so it's more of a mystery for people coming in that it's a Dracula movie. So there are two trailers for this movie. The first trailer very well hides the vampire aspect of it. And I would have been more excited. Is that the one we watched? No, we watched the one where it's very overtly vampire shit. And I would have Where they all start drinking glasses of blood. That's the one, yeah. I would have preferred... To have only known about the first trailer and gone in blind and then been surprised that it was a Dracula movie. Yeah, good that's, luck. So that's exactly what I was going to say was, okay, you change the name to make it more vague what it's about, but then you spoil the whole premise in the trailer by showing us that it's vampires and she's becoming a bride against her will. Though I will say the concept of taking the brides of Dracula and like flipping it and doing it from the bride's perspective and you find out that maybe these brides have been, you know, uh, probably always were supposed to be just like women that <clears throat> women that he took against his will against like, their like will basically through hypnosis yeah. and blah 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 like that stuff just think the movie looks pretty corny and yeah. we basically saw the whole thing in the trailer. and then it's the the woman who plays uh daenerys's right hand in game of thrones right oh natalia um, some mother Oh yeah, I thought you were talking about because in Interview with the Vampire, the guy who plays Louis is is the is, is the worm guy. From, yeah, Grey Worm. Grey Worm. Yeah, from Game of Thrones. So a lot of, lot of Game of Thrones actors. At least they're getting work. Yeah, yeah. Um. So yeah, I didn't think it looked that great, and it's Sony, so I don't have high hopes for it. Um. The thing that I did think looked fucking awesome and I'm very excited about is Showtime's Let the Right One In. They dropped a teaser for it. Oh really? And I think it looks great. I'm totally on board. It's got the vibe, the tone. It's obviously trying to kind of repeat the story a little bit. It even has little references like the, um, you know how every trailer now, it's kind of driving me crazy, has to have some sort of like audio thing that they repeat throughout the whole trailer. It's, I think maybe Hereditary started it with the, yeah. now every trailer has some vocalization. Men did it where she shouts into the tunnel ha. and then it, yes, yeah, throughout the whole trailer. Everything, everyone does it. Well, in this, it's the tapping on the case that the girl is hidden in, which the kid was do- is doing at the end of Let the Right One In. He's, like, tapping on it to message her in Morse code. That's, like, the beat behind the whole trailer. Mm-hmm. But stylistically, it looks very in line with the the both the Matt Reeves and the original movie that came out of this. It looks really bloody and fucked up. So I am interested. And Showtime puts out pretty good stuff. And also, giving it more of a long-form content allows it the ability to kind of dig into more of what the original story tells the the written story yeah uh, so i mean i'm interested to see how it turns out like i said i think both films have merit i think that the original is fantastic yeah so uh cruising out of the vampire territory into some other horror stuff we got the teaser trailer trailer for pearl which is the x prequel movie mm-hmm. we knew this was happening i think a lot of people were shocked when this news dropped that there was a poster in a trailer I'm like where did this come from 
we talked about this when X came out. Yeah. yeah. Um, they announced it like right away. <laughs> something that I did learn that I thought was really interesting is that basically the entire impetus for this movie existing is that Ty West learned from filming television in television shows that you don't waste a set. And he felt so bad about wasting the set that they had built for X that he just in like two weeks while he was in quarantine or whatever, just wrote this entire prequel with Mia Goth to be like, well, we'll just reuse the sets for the movie. Oh, um, but I watched the trailer or the teaser or whatever. Yeah. Um, and it's I like think, happy horror. <laughs> yeah. It's like sitcom horror. Yeah and, I lo- shit. yeah. and I think it's just a super cool idea. And it's cool that a 24 is behind doing this whole like, Hey, you guys liked X. Well, in what the same year we're giving you a prequel movie that has, that's on the same sets with Mia goth and is, has connections. They talk about the X factor thing in the trailer and have her standing on the X. They're obviously trying to very much tie it into the movie X and I like that because if this is also good, they'll be great companion movies to watch together. Yeah. So Yeah, it's cool to see Ty not waiting so long. Yeah, and maybe this will like deliver on some of the things that people may have thought X didn't totally deliver on. I couldn't say off the top of my head what those things are, but this is a chance to kind of revisit that world and maybe be more fucked up in places or um but uh things that I wanted to mention because we're going into uh, hopefully in the near future covering the Predator movies is we have Prey coming up. Mm-hmm. The uh, Is it Dan Trachtenberg um, directed sort of prequel to Predator? Um, something that I learned recently and I did some research to make sure this was legit is that they were struggling when they made this movie to uh, about whether they wanted to pull a hunt for Red October, which is where the movie opens with all of the characters speaking in Russian and then they go into speaking in English for the rest of the movie to ease the audience in and he was like well do we do this in in our movie and he's like no so instead what we're going to do is they filmed the entire movie both in english and in comanche so all of the actors did the whole movie also in comanche so that will be an option for anybody who speaks they know that that's their native tongue Hmm. there will be that option when it drops on hulu to watch it in comanche that's fucking sick and i just thought that was a super cool thing to do especially if you're trying to show that your movie is trying to respect i mean we won't know until it comes out whether it does but it's trying to respect that culture um i would almost rather watch it subtitled yeah, subtitled in Comanche. Yeah, I was thinking the exact same thing where I was like, ooh, that might make it like even more immersive and to make you feel like you're really in that time period and stuff. It would just be like watching any other foreign film when with subtitles. When does that come out? It's this August, right? Yeah, it's in like a week and a half. It's like the beginning of August. I think it's the 6th maybe. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I mean, we're going to have to turn around and start watching some Predator movies. Quick. With the quick. I think there's only four. Right, quick. Yeah, they'll be easy. I actually watched um, Predator last night. Yeah. To get a little jump start, you son of a bitch, Dylan, <laughs> pushing push too many pencils. pencils. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that movie is yeah. so good. Also, lots of Stranger Things references. Re- Stranger Things references a lot of things from yeah. Predator that I never realized. Um, Using a pan flute and the strike that reverse it. Yeah, but we'll talk about that when we get into that because we have gone on way too long with Chop Talk. Way but we told long. you you'd be bursting at the ass Ooh, about this news. This is so. almost as crazy as that one news episode we did where it was literally just news from. Like the quarantine. Oh yeah, the catch up. Yeah. yeah. The good, the bad, and the whatever we called it. The creepy. Yeah. All right, cool. Just That'll wrap it up for Chop Talk. We'll go ahead and move into trivia. That Christmas house of wax, the fog, uh, piranha. It's one of those, right? Right? Ooh, John, can you sing for me? Ooh, Johnny, it's trivia time. <laughs> e. E. <laughs> Got you, Jeff. Yeah. Your trivia tune this week is... Triv, trivi, trivi, trivia. I wear my sunglasses trivia. at night so I can, so I can. Yes. Who's the artist? Um, Mr. Sunglasses. Do Mr. You know? Sunglasses? Um, I if you said the name, I'd remember. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I well, think it's like Chris something, Roy Orbison. Sun, gla- yeah, it's Roy Orbison. <laughs> it's, it's, it's sun glasses. It's Corey Hart. Yeah, Corey Hart glasses right. at night. All right, we're playing past the popcorn all genre. Uh, how this is gonna work if we read the year and the genre, and the person guesses Ooh. right from that, they get five points. Any clue after that is one less point. I'll read to John. John, you're going to read to Anthony. And Anthony, back to me. And Anthony mm. is coming off a win. He won the, at the very end of, of camp. Has the potential for a streak. 
So no pressure. How's that feel? Uh, I'm afraid to feel any emotions about it because I don't want to jinx it. So. You're like, you're like I, I'm going to act like I've been here before. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I have. All I can say is uh, I already shitted my pants. <laughs> <laughs> I shitted and pooped. <laughs> Shit in my pants. John, you got a 2008 action movie. What year did you say? 2008. Right, action Go movie. ahead and give me the quote, please. I heard so much about you from Vesper. The real shame is if she didn't kill herself... We would have had you two. That's Y O U T O O, not the U two. Not Bono yeah. and the Edge. <laughs> yeah, Bono the Edge. Uh, I heard so much about you from Vesper. The real shame is if she hadn't killed herself, we would have had you two. <laughs> I can't not hear. It. Yeah. It's the episode of Scrubs when she's like looking at her CDs and she's like, "Oh, I love you two. and the guy's like, "I love you." <laughs> I was like, "Oh, what's a U two song?" Can't think of off the top of my head. I'm gonna ask for the next clue. Is it like "It's a Beautiful Day"? Oh yeah, is that U two? Right? Yes, yeah. "It's or, a Beautiful uh, Day." They played in the album uh, store all the time. Still haven't found what I'm looking J- uh, for. Just, uh, just for those at home, so you can hate me a little more. Uh, I can't stand U two. <laughs> no, I think a lot you know what, John. I can't stand you too. <laughs> uh, the next clue: the people. Yep, people. The actors are Daniel Craig and Olga Kirilenko. Yep, Kirilenko. <laughs> Thank you, buddy. <laughs> Appreciate you. Okay, so yep, is it? And this is the, it. Two thousand eight, correct? Yeah. So then it's the Quantum of Solace. That is correct for four points. Drop the the just Quantum so no, of Solace. Three points. Three points. Nice. Yeah, that's tough. Whenever there's, it's in a series like that. Yeah. Because I think I got Casino Royale the other day, uh, the last time, and I couldn't. I wasn't sure. Anywho. Anywho. On the board. Hit I'll take me. It. Hit me. You have a 1993 thriller. Okay. 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 Give me the first clue, please. The quote is: When I came home, there was a man in my house. You find this man. I always feel like I just get the most vague shit. It could be any plot for any movie. You get a little looky loo. Well, don't do that. Hmm? What? Oh, all right. Right on, right on. This was an episode of Scrubs the other day. <laughs> so you said... This nine... is now a Scrubs podcast? <laughs> yeah, could 93 be. Thriller. Can you read the quote one more time for me? When I came home, there was a man in my house. You find this man. I'm going to have to get that next clue, please. Your actors are Harrison Ford and Tommy Lee Jones. Is this The Fugitive? Is indeed The Fugitive. Where's my family? Yeah. Yeah, so the actor that plays the janitor in Scrubs, mm-hmm. he is he's in, in the this Fugitive, movie. right? Yeah, so JD's watching it mm-hmm. and he's like, the "Janitor?" And he's like, "Kimball." He's on he's the cop on the train. Yeah. And so then he's like, were you in the fugitive? <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's pretty funny. I love that for him. Yeah. Tone, you have a 1999 fantasy film. Oof. All right, go ahead and give me a quote, please. Your quote is, I just can't see God putting a gift like that in the hands of a man who would kill a child. Oof. A gift like that? God? Tuffy, you know. Morgan? <laughs> That's a fucking throwback. 99 <laughs> fantasy? Mm-hmm. 99. Uh, who would kill a child? I don't know. Go ahead and give me the actors, please. Your actors are Timothy Hanks and Michael Clark Duncan. Speaking of Daredevil. <clears throat> Is we're, it? See, we're now into come on, baby, territory. <laughs> Is it the Green Mile? It is, it is the, the Green, Green Mile. Mile. It's a fantasy movie? Yeah. I've never seen it. He has powers. I didn't know that. He has fucking powers, bro. I just knew it was Stephen King. All right, we're all tied at three. We're going into round two. John, you got a 1979 sci-fi movie. 79 science fiction? Go ahead and give me the quote, please. The quote is a tagline. Oh, my God. <clears throat> In space, <laughs> no one can hear ice cream. <laughs> no one can hear you scream. I shouldn't say mix it up because everyone has done it. No one can hear you two scream. <laughs> that would be alien. That is correct for four points, sir. 
Damn, I had, dude, how'd you get that? Really just, you know, yeah, just so difficult. It. I should have ripped it at the year. But I, I yeah, you should have. I, I thought about it, but I was like, the, the one possibility that some other fucking bullshit. It's too early in the game to risk it. Yep, for that biscuit. Let's see what uh, happens. Anthony, you have a 1981 action film. Okay. 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 Give me that first clue, please. Oh, man, <laughs> I feel like this is a dick move here. It's not the years, honey. It's the mileage. It sounds so familiar. You've 1,000% seen this. I guarantee it. Yeah. Oh. That's but tough. it's like literally the worst quote possible. For yeah, me. So that would have been a tough quote for me too. I'm gonna have to get the the cast to the cast is to Harrison save. Ford and Karen Allen. A lot of a lot of a lot of Mr. Ford. Harrison Ford and Karen Allen. It's not the years. It's the mileage. Is that what you said? Mm-hmm. And I've definitely seen this. One thousand percent. Oh, it's Raiders of the Lost Ark. It is indeed Raiders of the Lost which Ark. Which I just watched two nights ago. Yeah. And I I can't believe that I did not remember that. God damn it. I can't believe you got this fucking quote, dude. Anyway, what's the other one? God damn it. <laughs> you got the easiest fucking quotes. Well, so we'll, he's going to read to you right now. Yeah, fuck him. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Can I speak now? Yeah. Thanks. Tone, you have a 2004 thriller. Go ahead and give me the quote, please. Your quote is, I've got five stops to make. You drive the car, I'll make my rounds. You might make it through the night. You know that? Off Hell of yeah. It's a fucking awesome movie, too. Yeah, it's a great movie. All, it makes this person almost unrecognizable. Oh, totally. Oh, I want to... I have an idea. But I don't know. Collateral. It is, it is collateral. collateral. Yes. <laughs> Tom Cruise is almost unrecognizable in this role just because he's such a fucking dirtbag. Yeah. Jamie Foxx is fucking awesome in that yeah. movie, too. Whew. All right. So at the end of round two, John and I are at seven, and Anthony is at three. Still anyone's game. Wait. G- what? Stop like, three. Six. <laughs> yep. He got three in the last. <laughs> I just accepted it, too. I was <laughs> like, I'm probably sucking hell. Like, I'm dying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm literally dying here. I won six. I don't know why I said that. Anyway. <sighs> Here we go, John. 2001 Fantasy. Go ahead and give me the quote. <sighs> Excuse me, sir. Can you tell me where I might find platform nine and three quarters? <laughs> there's no, there's no fucking, there's no, like, there's no <laughs> spectrum of difficulty in this game. You either get, you, you either get a quote like that. Or you, I don't think there's anything you, on that card that would possibly make it difficult. No. Literally everything about that card is just 100% easy. Then don't uh, put it in the game. <laughs> so it's going to be Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. That is correct, sir. Speaking of Harry Potter, did you see that um, the like real-life Quidditch, Quidditch leagues have decided to change the, the name of the game to, yeah. I think it's Quad Ball, to distance themselves from mm-hmm. J.K. Rowling? I did, yeah. Good for them. them Good for them, except for the fact that I'm literally going to buy that fucking illustrated version of Order of the Phoenix day one when it comes to She's the definition of the... Uh, she's the... Uh, the definition of the you either die a hero or you live long enough to see yourself become the villain. Mm-hmm. 1,000%. And the face, need, bitch. You have a 2004 drama film. Okay. 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 Okay, hit me with that first clue. In LA, nobody touches you. We're always behind this metal and glass. What's the... Let me see. 2004. Uh, give me another clue, please. Your cast is Don Cheadle and Matt Dillon. I am not familiar with Don Cheadle or Matt Dillon. Like, I know who they are, but not their um, mm-hmm. filmographies. I could so, rattle off like seven or eight other actors other than this. It was a lot of famous people. From 2004? Mm-hmm. What was the category? The drama. Drama. <clears throat> I have no fucking clue. This dude gets Alien and Harry Potter, and I can put over the fuck this is <laughs> yeah. Don Cheadle and I Dillon. also probably could have nailed this one. I've seen it like 15 or 20 times. Well, ain't, ain't that fucking cool for you, John? Would you like the characters? <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> Officer John Ryan, carjacking victim Jean Cabot. Or maybe Cabot. I, don't, I mean... You're asking the wrong guy. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. What's the story? 
Wishbone. <laughs> Uh, racial tensions in L.A. are shown through a series of shootings, crimes, and car accidents. The last, the last part of that I don't sentence. Know, crash. Is, yeah, it's crash. I was gonna say the last part of that sentence is a big fucking hint. Well, I've watched the Cronenberg crash, and I know he was mad about this crash existing. Uh, so well, yeah, I went out of my way not to watch it. So, it is a half decent movie. I watched it a lot in 2004 because mm-hmm. it was before I had full it functioning also brain. had uh it got a ton of awards at the time and now in retrospect is not as mm-hmm. good of a movie 1000 yeah, percent, yeah it, right? it, it won the academy award that year and was probably because it, it just had hella famous people very in it. not deserving but it had i think it had might have had sandra bullock in it but it had like a bunch of people. people i think brenda fraser's in it too um uh shoot what's his, uh michael pena Mm-hmm. Darren Aronofsky's new movie is uh, coming to A twenty four. Brendan Fraser is the main what? star, and Sadie Sink what? is in it. Yeah, and it's called The Whale, and he is, I'm sure, aided slightly by prosthetics, but he is fucking massive mm-hmm. in the movie. But people are beyond excited to see him in it. Well, he yeah, he was in a movie on HBO not too long ago, and he was pretty heavy. Yeah, but this, this looks was like like, exaggerated. Yeah, like, yeah, wow. even further than that. Um, so yeah. That card sucked, but I'll have to go check out Crash because what I what dawned on me is like maybe I should watch these movies that I just completely tanked the cards on. So I watched Michael Clayton last night. Super fucking cool movie. Yeah, I've never it. seen it. I'll have to check it out. Yeah, um, Clooney is fantastic. Tilda Swinton is Tilda she, Swinton. well, she won Best Supporting Actress for the movie. So yeah, yeah she's great. Uh, anyway, nineteen ninety two comedy tone. Go ahead and give me the quote. There's no crying in baseball. A league of their own. It is a league of their own. I thought maybe I could throw you off by giving like Kevin Costner baseball vibes. instead of saying, "There's no crying in baseball." I've never seen a league of their own, so I would. You know should. How it's to say very good. Oh no, that, that's not a movie where I'm like, oh, I avoided it. It's just I've just never had a chance to check it out. But I love Gina Davis and Tom Hanks, mm-hmm. Timothy Hanks. Sorry. At the end of that round, John and I are at eleven, and Anthony is at seven. Seven. Seven yeah. eleven was a part time job. <laughs> All right, John, you got a 2003 fantasy. 2003 fantasy. Go ahead and give me the quote, please. You're making me angry. You wouldn't like me when I'm angry. Seriously? <sighs> yep. <laughs> so this one is going to be... I'm about to have a conniption. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Ang Lee's Hulk. Uh, yes, that is correct. Yeah. There's no the, it's just Hulk. <laughs> Hulk. Eric Banner, Bruce Banner. <laughs> <laughs> Eric Banner, Bruce Banner. <laughs> and the Diva 2003 action film. Okay. Give me a clue, please. There are two kinds of thieves in this world. The ones who steal to enrich their lives and those who steal to define their lives. What year did you say this was? 2003. Mm. It's a tough one. I feel like there was a lot of like thieving movies yeah. in it, this time period. It was a, a, a big territory. I think the next one gets you there pretty handily. Yeah, give me the next one then. All right, the cast is Mark Wahlberg, Jason Statham, and Donald Sutherland. Although you may have been slightly too young to have seen this when it came out. Uh, I, I don't know. It's I pretty want in the lexicon, though. It's not like Michael Clayton. <laughs> Very true. By the way, the quote from that card where he's like, I'm not the guy you kill, I'm the guy you pay or whatever, mm-hmm. yeah. isn't until the very fucking end of the movie by the time you get there. It's a great-ass line. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I have no fucking clue what movie Mark Wahlberg and Jason Statham and Donald Sutherland were in together. Characters? Yeah. Charlie Crocker and Handsome Rob. <laughs> Nope. A gang of criminals plans a heist using gridlock and traffic congestion to their advantage. That doesn't um, do much for you, huh? I don't know. No clue. What is it? It's the Italian job. Okay. Yeah, I wouldn't have guessed it. It's pretty good. I also like heist movies. <laughs> yeah. And heisting. And yeah, like also... I, haven't, I haven't even seen all the Oceans movies, so I mean, I'm not like a... this one was a remake. It was, yeah. I believe, was uh, what's his face? Steve McQueen was he in the original? I don't know. 
Could be. Well, I'll add it to my list. Just uh, hold on to the. Remind me. (laughs) There's some movies on there that I need to watch. Just everyone you don't get. Um, Tone, you got a 2003 action movie. All right. I'll take a quote, please. A man does what he can until his destiny is revealed. 2000 what? Three. Three Action. action. A man does what he can until his destiny is revealed. I do not know. I will go ahead and take the character or the actors. Your actors are. Tom Cruise and Ken Watanabe. That name sounds so familiar. Yeah. He's in uh, some of the new Godzilla movies. He's in a ton of stuff. Ken Watanabe. He was in Inception. Mm -hmm. Okay. Does that that bring it back for you? (laughs) Hmm. The Last Samurai? It is The Last Samurai. Nice job. You're, you're making some um, very lucky guesses this game, but it's paying off for you. Three points? Yep. All right. Cool. Well, John takes the lead at 15. Anthony is at 7 still, and I am at 14. And, John, I hope these... God damn it, dude. <laughs> One of these might be hard for you, but you hey, got a 1992 I don't want to play this game anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Let's switch back to horror trivia. This game fucking sucks. It's rigged. 1992 drama. Oh, go ahead and read. <laughs> Give me the quote, please. You can't handle the truth. <laughs> A few good men. Yeah. God, I hope the next one's hard for you. <laughs> we'll find out. No An- offense. And then you have a 2004 drama. Okay. Give me a quote, please. Tagline, for some men, the sky was the limit. For him, it was just the beginning. What was the year and genre again? 2004 drama. I'm not going to assume you've seen this just based on what happened on the last one. But this is, if you haven't seen this, this is a movie you should watch. I have a, I have a, Pretty strong hunch, but it doesn't matter at this point. I can't win the game, so I'll take the next clue. Okay, it's uh, the actors are Kate Blanchett and Leonardo DiCaprio. Does that help? What you oh, uh, the Aviator it is indeed the Aviator. Show me the blueprints, little. Martin, Show me those blueprints, Martin Scorsese. Show me the blueprints. Is that the one about Howard Hughes? It is. Yeah, that movie is fucking wacky, but it's pissing in bottles and shit. Yep, mason jars. Yeah, very good movie. Uh, Tone, you have a 2001 musical. Ooh, all right, go ahead and give me that. Your quote is, the greatest thing you'll ever learn is just to love and be loved in return. Go ahead and give me that, I guess. The cast is Nicole Kidman and Ewan McGregor. Okay, Moulin Rouge. It is Moulin Rouge by Baz Luhrmann. Isn't that Baz Luhrmann? I think yeah. so. All right, John's at 19, Anthony is at 10, and I am at 17. And this is the end, huh? Mm-hmm. I'm just happy to be in double digits. You I've got... cooled down a little bit since I <laughs> since I screamed over him last time. <laughs> 2006 war film. 2006 war film. Go ahead and give me the quote. You're in the picture. You raised the flag. That's the story we're selling, boys. <sighs> oh, fuck. It's one of two movies. Come on, baby. Son of a bitch. Is it Flags of Our Fathers? God damn it, yes. <laughs> yeah, because it's either that or Letters to Iwo Jima. They were made back-to-back like back years. Partner the, movies? Yeah. From different perspectives or whatever? Mm. Is it? Yeah. That's Good the, job, bud. If you hit me with, like mid 2000s like drama films and shit I probably saw them all I was hoping that was gonna stump ya yeah you showed it to me like you thought it was gonna stump him and I was like there's no stump in this guy we've just come to we've come to learn that if we move um, outside of the horror genre that I've got a well, pretty good strength I'm starting to, to feel like it. you've basically hustled us for like three seasons now <laughs> <laughs> yeah you had you said hey, you bring out Lucille <laughs> like, god damn it <laughs> Oh, shit. Anthony, you have a 2002 science fiction film. All 
Oh, thank God. Okay. Um, <laughs> well, let's see. What's the uh, what's the clue? Uh, the quote is, "There hasn't been a murder in six years. The system, it is perfect." Let me see. I think I know. Minority Report. It is indeed <laughs> Minority Report. Right on, brother. If I get five, I still lose. So you already won, right? Mm. Yeah. Fucking guy. Keep, <sighs> keep it in your pants, okay? okay. We still got questions to read. Hey, I'm a- I'm just trying to act like I've been here before. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Tone. You have a 1999 drama film. All right, go ahead and give me a quote. I feel like I've been in a coma for the past 20 years, and I'm just now waking up. What was the year in 99 drama? 99 drama. Go ahead and give me the cast. Cast is your personal favorite, Kevin Spacey, and Mina Suvari. Is that American Beauty? It is American Beauty. Good movie that I have a hard time wanting to go back and watch because of Kevin Spacey. Yeah. All right, well, for trivia, Anthony brings up the rear at 14. I'm sitting in the middle at 20, and John takes the win at 23. You know, nobody likes you when you're 23. (laughs) I don't think anyone likes me at 33. (laughs) So true. Oh. I mean. Oh, Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay, real quick, what were the movies that I need that I need to make sure I watch? Letters oh. to Iwo Jima. No, that's not on the list. That is not on the list. Um, it was... Crash, Crash Maybe. Yeah, Crash Maybe. And then the other one that was like a for sure you should watch was... Italian Job. Yeah, the Italian, Italian Job. Job. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Let's move on. All right, yeah, that's going to wrap it up for trivia. We're going to do some ads and shit, and then... Hold, please, though. Hold up. Because there is one thing that you should know about if you enjoy these three chuckle fucks you're either watching or listening to um, is that we will be on an episode of Chuck and Ruff Go to the Movies. We are rounding out their Christmas in July special series of episodes with, I mean, by the time you hear this, the episode came out Friday of last week. So go check it out. Go to Chuck and Ruff, go to the movies, wherever you get your podcasts and shit check out that episode we're talking about did you already say it i have not oh cool we're talking about Ernest. <laughs> no we're talking about nightmare before christmas jack p skellington <laughs> and we we dive deep we dive deep into that movie you think we're just going to talk about how good it is no we dive into do the relationships make sense how does the bureaucracy in halloween town work we <laughs> really just, hierarchy? yeah we really just go into the the nitty-gritty of, should jack of skellington have or not have eyeballs can. All the things that, no joke, we talked about. Yeah. Yeah. So check that out. Show their show uh, support. Show us the support of listening to us talk some more. And yeah, I'm glad you said that because I completely forgot. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Now we're going to do the ads and shit, and then we'll be right back with our main discussion of Jordan Peele's Nope. Give us your fucking money. <laughs> Head on over to patreon.com forward slash porcelain peak for hours and hours of additional content, merch, and more. For $5 a month you get access to our weekly trivia bonus episodes, where we write each other new quizzes for every episode, for $10 you get access to our monthly slash piece theater commentary tracks, where we crack wise over the top of movies for your enjoyment, alongside a monthly print designed by Anthony Silva. For $20 you can join our producer tier where you will get early access to our episodes, a t-shirt every six months and the ability to help us come up with ideas for future episodes. All versions of the episode are provided ad-free on Patreon. Again, that's patreon.com forward slash Porcelain Peak to help support the show. Head on over to PorcelainPeakShop.com and purchase some merch to help support the show or purchase our Horror is for Everyone shirt to support new causes every month. This month we are donating all proceeds from this shirt to GLSEN because we believe that all students deserve to learn in an environment free from bigoted pieces of shit. Share a picture with your merch on Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook and we will give you a shout out on a future episode. Again that's P-O-R-C-E-L-A-I-N-P-A-K-S-H-O-P dot com to help support the show and look fly as hell in the process. Thanks to everyone for watching, now back to Tone, John, and Anthony. You, you want to see something really scary? 
Welcome back. As mentioned previously, we're going to be talking about Jordan Peele's Nope. So eventually we are going to get into spoilers. But before we do that, you guys want to do a little bit of background and then kind of our general thoughts? Sounds like a plan. All right, cool. Yeah, so yeah. obviously written and directed by Jordan Peele. This one stars Daniel Kaluuya as OJ, Kiki Palmer as Emerald, his sister. And then we also get Brandon Perea as Angel. They're Mr. Fry's Electronics. <laughs> They're techie. Uh, Michael Wincott as... Antlers. Antlers, yeah. He's the cinematographer. Uh, yeah, okay. A director of some sort of cinematographer. And then Steven Yoon as... As Jupe. Jupe. And then the last one I'll mention is old Keith David, who plays their father. Papa Haywood. Yeah. So, obviously, there's other people. There's a supporting cast. Oh, Terry <laughs> Notary plays Gordy. <laughs> Yeah, it was, I thought that was funny when I saw that. There's a, You never think about the people who do the animal noises. But, um, yeah. yeah, so very basically, I mean, this isn't spoiling anything beyond what's in the trailer. Um, Daniel Kaluuya and his sister are on, a, on their family ranch. They see some shit maybe happening in the sky. They decide, hey, we should try to get this on video. And that's pretty much the extent of what we can go into without spoiling. Yeah, the basic premise of the movie, pretty much, yeah. And so, like we mentioned, Brandon Perea is the tech man that they hired to help them try to capture if something is or isn't happening. And the story kind of unfolds from that. I think in general, I thought this movie was good. I enjoyed myself. Yes, 100%. Um, what about you guys? Yeah, I'm... Did you enjoy yourself like Pee Wee Herman style in the yeah, theater? Yeah, yeah, yeah. John, yeah. I said, John, uh, this popcorn's not going to burn uh, itself, Garcon. buddy. <laughs> yeah, you were reaching over to him and he was reaching Garcon? over to you. Yeah. yeah. We did the, the old Dutch rudder. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I, I, I had a good good time. Um, we talked about it a little bit off mic, but I would 100% pay to see this again. Yeah, yeah. We, we were talking about, you know, compar- <clears throat> comparing like, you know, the uh, men, the black phone, and nope, which was the most enjoyable experience. Which one would we like? go the quickest back to seeing and this, this is the, the one. yeah this is yeah. the one one thousand percent it's more accessible yeah i yeah. think but well, maybe the black phone but this is accessible and good <laughs> yeah and i mean fun it, yeah yeah and there's there are specific qualities that we'll get into that just continue to affirm the fact that uh jordan peele is a master of horror um and is a master of comedy you know i think that and he blends the two in a way that i don't think any other director is doing right now just see dave Chappelle in an interview was talking about how butthurt he mm-hmm. gets about key and peel because he sees at the end it says created by key and peel and he goes no i invented the i invented that type of show and people are like yeah you didn't fucking you didn't invent, invent short ske- form sketch comedy yeah literally that shit has been happening since like fucking Carol just because other black people are doing shit, it though. doesn't mean that it's that's not like a new thing. He's been griping about that since yeah. the show was on. But he's doing it. I mean, obviously, cons- since Jordan Peele is in the news, people are asking him about. Yeah, you know, show just me, to get a comment out. Show of me a run of three great horror films that you've directed, Dave Chappelle, and also show me that you're a good person who's not a fucking terrible, awful turf. turf. Yeah, or pioneering other directors to make decent horror films. Yeah, yeah, but um, I yeah, I had a blast with this. It was um. While being the most accessible of his movies, I also felt like it had the least straightforward, like, structure and probably takes the most... Like, to, to me, at the end, I felt like it took a little bit more, like, I need, I'm going to need to sit on this and think about it a little bit to really understand everything that's going on. His other ones, I was pretty, like... But then again, like, Get Out was the same way, where I was like, I'm pretty sure I understood everything that movie had to say, and then every time I watch Get Out, I see more, more stuff that, like, ties into the themes and everything. And the surface was enjoyable. Yeah. And yeah. it's only after rewatch that you notice there's a lot more to it, maybe. But I think that that's kind of all I want to say. I do recommend it to anyone out there that is a fan Pay of Pay the money, go see the it genre in theaters. and a I fan think, of Peel in general. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think this benefits from being seen on the largest screen possible as well. The yeah. effects work is great. Great cinematography, yeah. awesome sound design and soundtrack and score, mm-hmm. all of that. Yeah, definitely check it out in theaters. Yeah. All right. So moving forward, we are going to get into spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so you could go see this in theaters, or uh, the guy sitting next to me was just recording the whole movie on his phone. So, so call this you, motherfucker. So if you want to check out his uh, his cam of the movie, you know, uh, maybe was, we get a cameo from me. Was he adding in some uh, like Dutch angles and stuff for like flair? Just to oh, try yeah, to he put was doing it all one handed, willy nilly, cinema verite. You know, yeah. <laughs> we had a fairly strange. 
segment I of experience. I forgot this happened. Yeah, so we sat in what's more or less the handicap section mm-hmm. where they have spaces between it and it's like companion seats yeah. because the theater, the Regal here, it's a wall behind you. Yeah. Locks out light and sound. Mm-hmm. And for us being like the theater snobs that we are, it kind of worked out. Anyway, uh, a couple I'll, gaps and a few seats down, there was it, an el- hit, older yeah. man. Yeah, I'll hit you with exactly what he did. Yeah, okay. so for the video... That he yeah, so he would stand. Oh, I heard about this. Adrian told me that wasn't he like? Didn't you have to go complain or something? What and... complain? <laughs> I went and got help. Okay. Yeah, so he was because you guys standing. thought there was something wrong with him, right? Right. So he kept yeah. standing and then sitting, and he couldn't. And he would do it. He did it like three or four times, and then finally got up and started walking. Oh, and it was. I mean, it was and sad. It was very slow walking, and then the woman, a couple seats down, started helping him. Mm-hmm. And I was gonna stand up to help him. But she had been hacking and sneezing the whole time, and I was like, I don't want to go near this broad. Yeah, we had good, we had good distance. We were like, yeah. at least twelve or thirteen feet away from her seat. Right. So. so I did the next best thing, and I went and got an usher, and I said, Hey, there's a man in here who looks like he's struggling. I don't know if he needs medical attention or what, but mm-hmm. he's having a hard time. Um, and then he, they helped. They came and helped him out, and he never came back. So I don't, I don't know what happened. But I hope yeah, he's I could okay. imagine. I it, okay. You know, I, I know for older people, a lot of time it just hurts to sit for a long time. So it could be one of those things where maybe he I mean, and he was moving around or... so slow. And I, mean, I, I'm curious too if maybe this is not what he was expecting. <laughs> I could see that. The beginning of this movie is very much a horror movie. It kind of changes. I think that's kind of how us was too, right? Where the mm-hmm. beginning of us is very much a horror movie. We don't know what's going on. It's almost it's like a yeah, and then it becomes you know the story of what's actually happening. And this is very similar, where the beginning is fucking terrifying. Yeah, in parts, and then it's more of just them kind of figuring out what they're doing um, in the later half. But anyway, that was kind of our theater experience. So a little bit better than a guy recording, but still very strange. I was like, nope. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and I, I just kind of I texted you guys about this in the in the group chat, but I was like, I've been bitching about people's behavior in movie theaters for what fifteen years now, and it's not gotten better; it's only gotten worse. And so I was like, this just affirms my like defeat at the movie going experience. Like I've I have I surrender to the fact that this is just the way that culture is, and this is how movie theaters are now. It's just and fifty percent of the time you're gonna get. A time. I just I, I can't get no respect, and it is just. Uh, I just realized, like, okay, well, this is just more reason for if I can watch it at home. This, I would have wanted to go to the theater regardless and just suffered through whatever. And it wasn't an awful experience, but it just reminded me, like, I can't get so frustrated at people taking out their phones in movies because it's just going to happen. It's just part of the experience of I'm going to movies. <laughs> Whatever. We should get some glasses for you and then some attachments for ours where they put blinders up to everything but the screen. Yeah. Pretty much. I mean, honestly. All right. So the movie opens pretty crazily where all this shit just starts falling from the sky and kills Keith David. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> Do we get the... Um, oh, We well, get the Gordy scene opening, before yeah. this, right? So we see a monkey. Well, we don't know that he's killing people. We just see a bloody monkey and yeah. dead people. And he kind of is like, what's up, lady? Yeah, so... I mean, you, was you... kind of out of left field i was like what the fuck was so that? I, I knew that the chimp had gone crazy and attacked a bunch of people and i i i wouldn't say that i have a phobia but like i don't like chimps i think they're very scary apes and like great apes in general i think are very <laughs> scary and i don't know how much that has to do with the like uncanny similarity to human beings and stuff and like i know there's a lot of people where that bothers them because we are so similar as species mm. um but it's it's just the raw power and aggression and mm. the fact that this what happens in this movie with the the chimp has is happened based on a true story of travis the chimp who actually ripped a woman's attacked and ripped a woman's face off ate her face tore her hands off um, oh my god! For it, what during a TV? No, so it wasn't during TV. It was this. This was a woman in I owned... think Florida or something who was who had raised a chimp since it was a baby, and it was part of her family. Her husband had recently passed away. They had had one other incident. I just read about this recently, having yeah. no idea this movie was going to tackle this whole thing with the chimp. Um, and Jordan Peele was very heavily inspired by this actual true story. But yeah, so um, the woman had given the chimp a little bit of Xanax, which they found out after they tested it. Um, which can cause aggression in both humans and like really? as a side effect. Yeah, isn't they, that kind of the opposite of what you want with a zanny? But yeah. zannies are very sh- like short 
acting. So if you can end up having like withdrawal symptoms that include aggression and stuff like that. So anyway, there's something going on with this chimp. A uh, woman was having a hard time getting him under control. So she called her friend who had worked with the chimp previously. The friend comes over with his favorite toy, which is a Tickle Me Elmo. As soon as she gets out of the car with a Tickle Me Elmo, the chimp goes completely berserk and attacks her. And like I said, eats her face, rips attacks her Attacks the friend or attacks the friend the... Oh, who, was, yeah. who came to try to help. Um, and yeah, rips her face off, tore her hands off. Tore her hand, like mm-hmm. her hand off? Mm-hmm. Yeah. They are... They're pure muscle. They're fucking Holy terrifying. Shit, That's man. why I'm like, I chimps she are scary. Died? No, so she survived. She went on the Oprah show, like, like which ties into the whole Oprah shot spectacle yeah. trauma thing of this entire movie. So she had a, a face transplant performed. Apparently, the first time was awful. Um, and they at went one point back. they reattached her hands, and then they didn't take, so they had to take them back off. Oh my! Yeah, God. like um, she went on to Oprah with the same like veil over her face and did the whole reveal of what her face looked like and she has since you know had taken several legal more action and had tons of surgeries to try to she took legal action against her friend against the friend um, that sucks I mean but at that point your you life is completely fucking ruined like she lost her eyes she, she lost ch- her nose she, yeah I don't want to get to it. <laughs> anyway well that anyway sucks. the chimp yeah. ended up dying because then the woman tried to stab it the owner tried to stab it to death, which she said felt like stabbing her own son. Oh my god! And then this when is that crazy. so when that didn't work, the cops showed up finally. And there's a harrowing phone call that I've heard multiple times of the woman screaming like, "It's eating my friend! He's eating my friend!" And the cops finally showed up. He t- jumps after the cop cars and tries to like get in through the window, and the cop shoots him and kills him. Yeah. And they find out afterwards that he had Xanax in his system and Wow. Um, so I mean, it's, it's significant gross negligence on the part of this woman who who was That's the fucking of the nuts, dude. Yeah, so in this movie, it's on the set of a TV show. Um Steven Yeun's character Jupe was we find out was a young was a child actor on the show um uh, called Gordy's Home and um he was a witness to all these people being violently attacked and yeah, so he so, has uh, a relationship uh, to this kind of like predator this, prey this predator prey and this, tra- this trauma and um he is kind of almost as a way to cope with his trauma has built this entire like jupiter's claim um site to capitalize on like memorabilia and stuff related to the events that happened on gordy's home and um he has even like the bloody shoe mm-hmm. that was standing up during you know when the attack happened he even he he can't even describe what happened and talk about it. We only see it in his flashbacks. Yeah. So, but when it comes to party. actually explaining it, he goes like, "Oh, watch the SNL skit about it." Like yeah. that's how much he like can't seem to really come to terms with. How I the love trauma. his casting. Yeah. I was like, yeah, Chris Kattan would be the monkey. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So during the TV episode, they're doing a birthday party. A balloon explodes or pops, or whatever, yeah. and that's Startles what sets Gordy off. Yeah. And then, and then he, he just he, beats the fucking shit out yeah. of literally everybody. And well, I, I think he kills the father figure. Yeah. Right. Um, and so yeah, that's kind of how the movie opens. And then we get everything fall because it kind of has two cold openings, right? Yeah. Yeah. So then, like you said, we get Keith David and Daniel Kaluuya, who are father and son. Um, they are working out on the ranch. Um, his father is getting ready to take this horse. I think it's Ghost. The yeah. white one, um, getting ready to take the horse out. Um, shit starts falling from the sky, and you get that really like creepy reveal where Daniel Kaluuya is looking at his father, and you just see him kind of slumped over. And then as the horse rides, he, he just falls, falls off. off. Yeah, I loved it. Uh, we find out that um, he was killed by like a nickel or a quarter through the eye. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so he's out of the movie super quick, which I was surprised by. But um, he was too busy yeah. filming with uh, with Stuckman. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, possibly a reference in itself to the thing. Yeah. yeah, another big alien movie, and we see that there's a key, like a house key in the flank of the horse. So there's all kinds of random metal objects falling from the sky. Um, they, I think they explained it in the way away in the movie by saying that it was like some shit that fell from a plane. Yeah, right. passing by. Yeah, yeah. So now Daniel Kaluuya and his sister have inherited the farm. Their family is uh, they Hayward. raise and train horses for Hollywood. Hayward's uh, Hollywood horses, I think, right or something like that. Yeah, and the H is just a strip of film. Yeah, John it's hated like, that design. <laughs> I was like, that's. I was like, I, it makes a ton of sense for these characters, Trust and me. it's great in that way. But it's terrible. Trust as me, an as a person who can design. safely say graphic design is my passion, 
Um, I also hated it. It's, I was, yeah, <laughs> it's, but, it literally says it's like like a words because you, you also, can't tell that it's an eight. It did look legit for like some people on a ranch who probably yeah, paid like one hundred bucks to have some dude draw and up their logo. From it's when thematically the accurate. Yeah. yeah, thematically accurate. But it would be a terrible design if I were if someone were handing me a business card for that business. Yeah. yeah so basically, so, they have the first photographs ever put together to make a film was of a black man and that black man happens to be their great 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 i yeah. believe grandfather that's another great <laughs> yeah. and so they are still doing horse work for hollywood you could say since the beginning of film they've had skin in the game there you go literally um, the quote yes yeah, so this is actually based on so in reality this you know a lot of people have seen like the first ex- one of the first experiments in film is this horse riding well in reality nobody knows who the the jockey is mm. nobody's ever really known who the jockey is so it literally they, just credited it as the jockey yeah the idea of it being their ancestor so it, it makes me believe it's one of two things. One is it's actually their ancestor and they've kind of been robbed of like the 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 credit. fame that would have the credit that would have come with that. Two could also be that it may not actually be their ancestor and it could be this tie that they, you know, because just you trying know, to get skin in the game. Exactly. Yeah. You know, trying to get some sort of notoriety out of connecting themselves to that. Like, um, so I thought that was interesting that it's never fully confirmed. The speech, which plays off as kind of, you know, as kind of funny and tongue in cheek. Mm-hmm. It has a layer of sadness that you get to when it's later revealed that she literally is just repeating her father's speech. And that's the reason why she doesn't remember that there's a third grade. Mm. One yeah. of the things that if you're not paying close attention, you'll miss. So other key moments from this scene specifically that we take with us later on in the movie, we meet the director or cinematographer. Antlers. Which is very important later on. We also see that, what's his name in the movie? Uh, OJ has a very a lot of experience training the horses and working with animals, which is very important in how to look at them and to not look at them huge play later and then he also has a some pretty crippling social anxiety too right and yeah. then we get he, to see he, he and his sister are like polar opposites mm-hmm. she's, exactly. she's very much the extrovert who is interested in the fame of it all and the notoriety of it all and the, like the spectacle and then he is all about the animals and training the animals and taking care of the animals he's constantly saying throughout the movie he's like i got mouths to feed i gotta get back to the ranch and she's like i got work to do <laughs> yeah, yeah so he you know his heart is in a different place and he really just kind of wants to like it it seems to break his heart that he's been having to sell the horses off to jupe to keep the the ranch running right um those yeah, are kind of the key elements the from that scene that don't forget oz perkins yeah who was he in that was he the taller dude with the glasses yeah yeah okay that's the guy that looked like, like the guy that looked like anthony perkins i didn't i didn't <laughs> feel like he did though he does i feel like he does and i was like is that is that oz and he was like i think so and i was like all right <laughs> I, I just saw his name pop up and i was like oh sick i just think that they've kind of come up around like him and pilo kind of come up around the same time mm-hmm. making like horror movies so um i thought that was a cool little nod and we get the like little the reflecting ball that startles the horse but yeah we get the established thing that um that OJ won his name, obvious reference to OJ Simpson, which the characters yeah. comment on. And that ties into the whole theme of this movie, which is trauma and spectacle, which and is I, the whole OJ I, case. I, I told John, I was yeah. like, I was really expecting him to jump on a white Bronco. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and, then, uh, and then he didn't. And I was like, dang it. Uh, but whatever. Neither here nor there. Right. So then OJ goes home and he believes he sees something in the sky or the horses start acting up, right? Yeah. And then he chases it. He sees something in the sky. He believes he sees something in the sky. And so then that prompts them to film the sky and their ranch because his sister, do they call her Emerald? What do they call her in the movie? M. M. Okay. Yeah. She wants to use it to have this Oprah moment to become massively famous. Yes. Instantly. Yeah. Kind of recapture that glory that they never got from their yeah. great, 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 being the and guy on the horse. That pushes the rest of the movie forward. So it's kind of everything's established now, and then it goes forward. They go to Fry's, which was a blast from the past. Yeah. I, do, I don't think if that may be the only remaining Fry's, if mm. Fry's is open at all anymore. I know, like, Does the one that in San Jose is. Fry's have a big flying saucer crash into does. it? Yeah. That, it, made me think, that it made me wonder, is that the only reason Fry's is so heavily in the movie is because Jordan Peele was like, I know that Fry's has a flying saucer crash mm-hmm. into the front of it, so I'm going to use it, and it's in the right location, and maybe it is, like, a popular L.A. 
it, 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 area it, fries. Yeah, it was like the only fries that was actually popular because there was one in San Jose that that, regu- that regularly didn't have business. It was, I mean, anytime I went there, but they also had like a DVD section, which mm-hmm. you know, yeah. we love, but they also had like porn just Ooh. out. And so when I was a kid, I was like, what the fuck? You'd also, it was also like, what it was a fuck? weird cross between something like a Radio Shack and then something like a Circuit City. Like, it was a combination of the two. You could go and buy, like, loose computer parts and stuff like that. But also then, you know, like, completed devices. But everything was marked up. Yeah, so that's like where we meet wise. Angel. And then he stays with us for the rest of the movie. And something that I, I liked about the way the side characters were handled in this movie is that most of these people I expected to show up for, like, a minute and then disappear. And pretty much every side character that's introduced plays a big role in, like, the, the whole plot of the movie. Like, even the cinematographer Outside guy. Outside of like, the woman from euphoria <laughs> yeah uh Which is I it barbie cool ferrera or whatever yeah. her name is yeah um it was cool to see her but i was like why is she here because it's just going to be distracting that everybody's going to recognize her from euphoria and she doesn't do anything yeah. i did like that she makes the comment like you know, he's watching all this crazy shit happen on the cameras or whatever, and he's getting all into it, and she's just treating it like a TV show, which is part of the theme. She's like, well, what happened to OJ? And just, like, snacking mm-hmm. while she, and, like, at treating it like it's reality TV. Yeah, and I think that that's kind of where the social commentary for this movie is, is fame. The lengths that people will go to to get that fame. Hollywood and, will chew you up and spit you out. Right. And literally. That literally. You get a good enough story, people will be glued no matter what they're doing, and that kind of attraction to cinema or to TV shows in general. And how people are attracted to gawking at horrible trauma. Yeah. And I how mean, trauma creates spectacle. Like, yeah. And it ties into the op- the woman going on Oprah and showing her face to mm-hmm. all these people is, let me take this horrible thing that happened to me and go on Oprah and let everybody gawk at how horrifying I look now because of this awful thing that happened to me. And people also like to poke at and make fun of those things, which is the commentary that comes in from mentioning that this tragedy that happened at, at the set of Gordy's home uh, was, you know, an SNL skit. Yeah, it was an SNL skit at some point, which I mean is very common. I mean, some of the worst, you know, tragedies in our in our lifetimes have been then made fun of by shows like SNL or Mad TV or, you know, people make jokes about them on stand-up sets and shit. So I mean, it's it is directly pointing at what anybody will do for a quick dollar and for 10, you know, their 15 minutes of fame. Mhm. And do you think that those are the main kind of commentaries that this film presents? On a first watch, that's what I have so far. Yeah. yeah. D- d- he tends to add race commentaries to his films, especially with Get Out. Do you, did you feel like that happened here? Well, There's some of it that feels like them going through this entire process of trying to capture all of this on film and then uh, and then a white cinematographer showing up at the end and trying to like one up them to kind of yeah trying to steal take the, ownership the perfect shot yeah. it, it feels like it's like i said it feels like it's you know directly pointed at and the white right. tmz okay. reporter trying to swoop in and yeah. uh you know grab a shot and take over and they're like no get the fuck out of here also just the entire like that them wanting to do this stems from having this story of their family getting shafted by the hollywood system and forgetting about their great 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 great, great blah, blah 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 yeah also Pretty much all of the main players, except for the cinematographer, cinematographer are minorities. That you know, Stephen Yeun be- is Asian, or I think he's Korean specifically. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the um, angel character is Hispanic, I think. And then you have obviously the the black main characters. Yeah, one for and me. So, <laughs> yeah, and so it's like all of these different people who typically Hollywood looks down on or, or puts aside they're all people who are trying to find their like fifteen minutes of fame or their time in the spotlight. So I think that's as far as that kind of social commentary goes i do think that it seems like he made a concerted concerted effort not to make the social commentary so much the forefront of what drives this movie unlike get out and us um and he said as much in interviews where he was like yeah i came up with this idea during covid and all really my main mission was i wanted i didn't know if theaters were coming back so i wanted to make a movie that would be a spectacle that you would have to see in theaters so i think he was trying really to just put a lot of just fun adventure Spielberg influenced stuff into this movie, which it wears on its sleeves. Yeah. Um, I mean, the ending of this is basically upside down jaws. Yeah. With the, the wacky waving inflatable tube men. It's just Mm -hmm. like the barrels and the water and jaws and, and the Bob's big boy inflated up. Yeah. So like we talked about the beginning is very horrific. Yeah. It's a lot of nights and making those scary. And then we, we see 
something pass in the clouds, what we believe to be a flying saucer for a long majority of this movie. Yeah, and that's kind of what the trailers made you think it was mm, going to be. Exactly. And then we actually get to see some aliens at some point, which I thought was fantastic because at first I was fucking so scared. I was like, that is actually scary. It, it, it it's. I know that it's played for a joke, yeah. but it's in the. I mean, I've mentioned on the show a hundred and fifty fucking times that that horror and comedy they share a fucking razor, razor thin margin between the two of them. And I feel like the way that he plays this off and comedy is the punchline at the end. It's so good. Yeah. Well, and it also ties into like you find out that they're like the Jupe kids or whatever, and yeah. then later you find out like, oh, well, the reason they had all the alien costumes and, and stuff is because. At Jupiter's claim, they're baiting the alien, like yeah, and, and have to a, make and, to make a spectacle yeah, to try to, to get their fifteen minutes it. of fame. Yeah, because uh, what's his name, Jupe's character, apparently has had interaction. Yeah, so yeah. it's yeah. it's With heavily an implied that the last six months of Jupe of of Jupe being there and all of the horses that have been sold from the farm have been all bait. been fed to the alien. So he's been baiting this thing for the last like six months at least. Right. So kind of the big reveal is that the saucer is not sucking them up and then doing experiments with them or it's, it's not, not a spaceship. It's a it's creature. It's being, an animal. Yeah, exactly. It is itself an alien which and maybe you guys have seen this. This is the first time I've seen anything like that. And I, I thought think that was a neat, I thought it was, thought it was a rad dumb. idea. Yeah I thought it was such a it's, it, it's one of those ideas that seems so fucking obvious when it gets revealed like oh why didn't i think of it like that being a thing yeah why has nobody else come up with treating that? them yeah. more like a cryptid than you know like a the, some sort of machinery from another dimension like this thing maybe could have existed since like prehistoric times and has just always been hiding in the clouds and sucking people up in different places like we don't really know anything about it but i loved that twist i thought it was so mm. cool yeah so we get to see stuff get sucked in and then basically digested which is yeah, so gnarly. Outside of the Gordy stuff, probably the most horrific scene in the movie is when uh, when OJ f- realizes what that flyer that Jupe was trying to bring was for is for this like starlight lasso or starlight exp- whatever the thing was that the event that they're having mm-hmm. um, to show people the alien. Yeah, so he basically puts one of the horses in a cage and tries to bait the alien. And uh, ends up getting everybody there, including the woman who had her face torn up. Which even bringing her there to the event felt like him exploiting her for, like the you know like oh she was on that show with me. Everybody yeah. say hi to her, and then she has to like smile and pretend like it's like don't bring up the memory of of that shit. But yeah, he's basically trying to capitalize on the alien, and it sucks them all up out of the stands because they're all and, watching him. Well, yeah, they're watching it. Yeah, sucks them all up, and then, yeah, you get to see its weird digestion. And then the way that it does it with the horses at first, and OJ comments, like, I've never heard a horse make that noise or scream like that, is once all the people get sucked up, and then you can just hear them screaming inside of it as it's, like, flying around through the clouds. And it's just, it's like, this horrific, distorted well, crowd it of screaming. rains blood all over the house as it's, like, like, doing the last part of digestion, which is to get rid of the stuff. It just covers the house in blood. Yeah, so it only is... keeps organic material, it seems yeah. like. And then that's why all the stuff was falling out of the sky, and that's why we get to see continuations of that happening. And that plays a huge part later in, in the movie. Before we get too far into, like, because we're getting dangerously close to where the movie ends. It's not a super, super long movie, but it is one of his longer efforts. I think it's two hours and 15 minutes. Didn't feel like it. Yeah, by. it, it, it by. fucking flew runs by. by. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but... Um, there's a particular scene in here that I think is just another reason why Jordan Peele has cemented himself as a master of horror. Um, mm. The way that he utilizes music, I mean, I, I think that we, we've talked about it, especially with Us and how he My utilized... favorite part of Us is the I Got Five on It yeah. stuff. The tethered remix of that song is fucking terrifying it always freaks me out when it comes on on my shuffle and i think i'm about to listen to i got five on it i started to get all excited and then it's like yeah it happened to me (laughs) at night leaving the mountains and i could not see shit and i was i started my car i started driving i was like what the fuck and then it was the scary version i was Uh like nope (laughs) yeah anyway no but Uh, he could have easily done a similar thing taken a song and done a remix of it but the way that he does this, he does it. He does it differently. So it's great. it's the uh, um, the sunglasses, sunglasses at, night at night song. The uh, Corey Hart, yeah, Corey Hart, and it was a. <laughs> <We're> <laughs> <awesome>. <laughs> 
it was so well done in well, a way it that ties into the what we've already seen throughout the movie. Of, yeah, like and the, we haven't even mentioned this is that the animal somehow is able to affect electrical electromagnet- fields. Yeah, like so. a, like an EMP almost. Yeah. And so the way that it's like the it playing slowly as things kind of start back up after this like first really long encounter with the beast has at, like it has this really comedic quality to it, and everybody's fucking cackling in the theater. Mm-hmm. And so we're at this point, everybody's laughing. And then it starts to slow down even further and it goes from this really funny moment into this absolutely terrifyingly paced, just like, oh, yeah, we're a it's yeah it, it, it just happens through like through happenstance. It feels like you, you can't see any of the strings that make this happen and it gets to this point and you just don't know what's going to happen next. And it's so fucking terrifying. Yeah. And I, I, like I said, I applaud the the use of music in this. I think it was perfectly done. That scene was probably one of the scariest scenes that's been in a movie in the last ten years. For me. And I think the song also lends to the fact that if you're wearing sunglasses, no matter what time of day, then it can't see you staring at it. It's yeah. blocking your view from watching the the creature. Thematically relevant, yes. right? Which we learned that if you stare at it, it will suck you up, and if you don't, your chances are better of not getting sucked. Yeah. Up. So yeah. OJ kind of has this theory because he relates it to his experience with the horses and with animals. Is that it is probably territorial, and that if you confront it by looking at it and make it feel like you're infringing on its territory, then it'll suck you up and eat you. Yeah, and this so, is where the the balloons and and the experience of Gordy's home all ties into this, and right. it starts to bring the two stories together. So at one point, it eats a plastic horse and the ribbon, and then gets sick, and then later on, characters use that to their advantage. Yeah, and it seemed that also seems to be an important moment where the the creature starts to become almost like fearful of what's going on. It becomes more defensive and tries to literally like puff itself up by expanding out mm-hmm. into this giant biblically angelic inspired um creature i know that the the biggest inspirations were angels from the bible because they are like these giant things with eyes all over the place and and they're like supposed to be things that you can't comprehend yeah and also evangelion the angels in neon genesis evangelion that was one of his inspirations um but yeah this thing unfurls and at the end it also looks like a giant camera it looks like the cameras that have like the accordion folds. Mm, totally. Yeah, and then it has like the lens that op- or almost like a screen that opens up in front of it. Um, yeah, at one point they're even playing the jockey on the horse in its mouth. I think during the opening. Yeah. Before you know what you're looking at. Yeah, and to me that was like That's it's a a, it's design uh, the UFO design to me was like a pinhole camera. Mm-hmm. And then as the movie progresses, it like opens up into this big, like more sophisticated camera. But throughout the movie, it's basically like a pinhole camera. And so I thought that was supposed to be like the, you know, the idea is that the, and the UFO being like a ref, kind of a reflective material almost lens. And that's where I thought, I thought that there like was lights, a parallel yeah. between the creature and the TMZ guy that comes in, because that's the most kind of disjointed feeling part of the movie is when this random helmeted, reflective helmeted tmz guy comes in and is like you gotta get the shot you gotta get the shot you gotta get the shot i think that's just supposed to one be jordan peele poking fun at tabloids and tmz Mm -hmm. and being obnoxious two his helmet looks like the alien Mm -hmm. it's reflective and has a little hole in it yeah which Um, is a stupid fucking way to ride a motorcycle (laughs) yeah and then also he like a lot of the other characters doesn't care about the traumatic things that are happening he just cares about get the shot like you know i just make sure you get this on camera make sure you get this on camera yeah, I mean, and this this feels a little more ham-fisted. It is definitely a like a more in-your-face version of what I feel like is a more subtle version that happens with Antlers, the cinematographer, shortly after, which is him being like, like they've achieved what they wanted to, what they set out to do. And right. So he, Antlers brings a camera that is hand cranked so that there is no electronic component to it, so that he can still get the shot with the alien close by since it won't have its electrical field affected. And so he has this camera. And so they've gotten a shot. They've gotten a shot of this thing passing through, uh, that could totally be used, but it's not the perfect shot because it's he realizes an hour. he really realizes what time it is. Exactly. And so if you're not someone who is big into cinema or big into photography, golden hour, may be something that's lost on you, but golden hour is essentially the hour right before the sun sets where, uh, the sunlight is, as perfect as it can be. Mm-hmm. Right. So I, I loved that they added that to the movie, obviously for nerds like us and Mrs. Jig and porcelain producer who are photographers. Yeah. That was obviously clear what he meant. 
I was producer kidding. Ashley the intern. You, you you stopped halfway there. We got several producers. Yeah, yeah, that broad. <laughs> but <laughs> I was curious to know if people would have got why he did what he did if they didn't know that because we know what the golden hour is so obviously we were like oh it's the golden hour that's his motivation for getting this he is and he's been so perfect he's been so extent. over the industry and over right. the thing and he just sits around watching video of predatory animals constantly and so so do you think that somebody going into this movie not having a background in the movies or photography like would understand that character's motivation at that point the answer is no because i've seen most of the the negative reviews in, in including Logan Paul's review, which I thought was fucking hilarious. Considering he is literally... He is the man who took the video in the suicide forest for views and got canceled for it. Mm -hmm. So, of course, he didn't get the movie about abusing or, you know, turning trauma into spectacle. Anywho, part of his review was like... You know, a lot of people's complaints like, why did he decide to like basically like commit suicide to get the shot? And it's like, because if you're a fucking artist and it's the golden hour and you want to get the perfect shot and you've spent your entire life and valuing desens- the art above yourself. Yeah. And to have become desensitized to where nothing excites you about it. If this is the one thing in your life that's finally exciting, you're going to do whatever it takes to try to get that shot. And he got sucked off for it. <laughs> <laughs> sucked I up. mean, sucked up. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sucked up and sucked off probably so what exactly happened with angel's character because he is wrapped in a tarp mm-hmm. very plot convenient <laughs> and then wrapped in barbed wire right yeah and then that gets sucked up but then he gets dropped because it hurts yes yeah but do we see him he's he's fine right he he, i'm fine? pretty sure he is fine i think i think i think he survived and i think um, I think the siblings OJ? survived. Yeah. OJ so his Emerald. his character, the angel character, was originally supposed to die. I think mm-hmm. um, that's what I read. And the actor actually basically argued with Jordan Peele and other people like constantly that it would. F- he he, he like, did throwing dead people at it. Yeah, he just didn't want all of these people even following throughout the movie to just willy nilly get killed at the end. And he was like, I think people would appreciate it if my character survives. Um, and- we also get a lot of ambiguity whether or not. OJ survives, and I liked that as kind of the final punch at the end of this movie. I mean, it shows that he survived at the end. Well, he's on, he's on the horse at the back. Yeah, but it's all covered in fog. I like, mean, you know I, it's him. I, I, no, but I'm saying I think that it could also be her projecting that, and like we're seeing this like spirit of him. You think that was salt? Like he was there? Because the way that it's like in the mist, and he just shows up. Like I think it could be her saying like I did it, brother. I like, thought I thought that shot was more set up that way to give him that like cowboy vibe, and yeah, I, the cowboy music playing. It, and it it's reminded to be the, me of the end of parallel, Django Unchained. Well, it's supposed to parallel with their great great. Oh, so you think that he's survived? Yeah, yeah. I think the idea oh, is that okay. both so, yeah. he. Yeah, I think he survived. I thought it had a touch of ambiguity. I can to see. It, I, 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 I'm, yeah, I'm not arguing that that's. Yeah, like I I, potentially I don't mind it either way. Yeah. And Jordan Peele like does idea. that with his movies where, like, um, he was talking about how, you know, he puts a lot of things where you can interpret them however you want. And that's the point. And I think a lot of this movie has especially a ton of it. We can talk about the shoe standing upright in mm-hmm. the Gordy's home attack, how we never really get that explained as to how that has any connection to anything else or why it's creepy doing as that. fuck. Very creepy. Yeah. What do you... So I think a lot of people thought, and I did too while I was watching that, that the Gordy attack had something to do with aliens when we still thought it was UFOs, and mm. that's why there was some sort of gravity thing going on. Other people have theorized that it's him misremembering the moment, and for some reason that stands out to him. I thought maybe because he has the shoe up in a stand that in his memory that's just how the shoe always was, was like standing up in mm. the memory because he's misremembering it, and he may even be misremembering that fist bump moment between him and Gordy as like this last moment of like having a connection with this animal. Um, and also it could be the idea that of the one in a million chance, which is what they're trying to get throughout this entire movie is that one in a million shot. And it may be just be, it's like know, the concept of like a coin standing on a end. Yeah. It's the thing that it's like, you know, this whole movie is about like, what are the chances? What are the chances that a quarter oh, would I fall see. through this guy's head and kill him? What are the chances that this shoe would be standing upright in the middle of all of this carnage going on, that there'd be this one, shoe that's standing upright and hasn't been disturbed yeah so there's a lot of different interpretations there and that's what i was gonna say like in get out he talks about how tons of people had uh interpreted um the allison williams character eating the cereal separately from the milk as like a segregation thing where the white milk is being separated from all of the differently colored cereal and jordan peele was like no i just thought it was funny but i love that i can put stuff in my movies and you guys can come up with these awesome 
like ways they tie into the theme and make the movie stronger in that way. And so I think he purposely yeah. does just put things in the movie. Like you're probably right. He wanted to leave it a little bit vague with like the, the fog or yeah, the, otherwise the sand would have or whatever. Seen him, like he would have sure. come up and said something. And like, you know, I think the fact, right. I think one, it's supposed to be like, you know, the, the lone cowboy on his horse it's supposed to reference back to the, the, you know, their great, great grandfather, but also could be that she's, imagining it speaking of fan theories real quick i thought this was funny it has nothing to do with this movie but i guess the creator of severance Mm -hmm. was like i have to stop going on reddit because the shit that people come up with is better than what i have planned for the show (laughs) yeah i forget i was watching something the other day where somebody else was talking about that too where they were talking about how like they can't go online and look up fan theories because then if they try to write something and it it starts to point towards the fan yeah and and then it's like well did i get it from the fan theory oh it was um it was dan Harmon and justin royland talking about rick and morty how they don't read the fan theories because they want to be able to write stuff and not think they stole it subconsciously from something they read online yeah but anyway Anyway, yeah so eventually we get oj maybe or maybe not sacrificing himself to pull attention away from m and then she runs to the jupe farms jupiter's claim yeah jupiter's claim because they have a, a wishing well that if you crank it, we'll take a picture. Which she sets up by spoiling the, uh, by photobombing the selfie in the beginning. Yeah, which again, is subtle and a way for it to, I don't know, the writing is so good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I love that kind of stuff where it doesn't beat us over the head. Again, it doesn't beat us over the head with the golden hour stuff. Like there's a lot that you have to know or just pay attention to in this movie that makes the experience for me anyway more enjoyable. Like I hate being spoon fed. I think you guys yeah. are the same way. Yeah. Um, so. She eventually does that, and it adds so much tension because it's like, is she going to fucking get it or not? Yeah. And she finally does, and the way that she kind of defeats him is, again, a plastic, almost like a big boy. Yeah, like, but yeah. Like it's a, essentially a balloon. It's a balloon, yeah. and it, the balloon pops, and it, it, from what we can oh, tell... I not even think about that. It explodes the... It's a balloon, and the alien is fooled because of the big eyes staring at it, so there's a couple different the things going on there. Yeah, yeah, that's smart. Yeah, so it explodes, and then apparently explodes the alien yeah i'm this is one of those movies where i feel like it's done a disservice if you don't sit and have a conversation with someone who else someone else who watched it that's I think why you, i was so excited to have this conversation yeah, because you i had so much, so much of this value floating around in my yeah. head yeah um some other things in terms of like references um once you watch this you will get a little bit more enjoyment out of the motorcycle scene because mm-hmm. she does a very heavily akira inspired motorcycle slide which is like mm-hmm. the most iconic scene from this i think it might even be on it's the on cover. the cover the cover the dude the dude fell and i looked at john and i was like been there <laughs> there's a uh, there's a uh, a poulter goose reference mm-hmm. when um the alien shows up when they're like trying to lure it for the shot yeah. and angel is it's like here. it's here yeah um uh, obvious- reference with uh, the Duke's scissors scissors on his desk yeah there's also a um like a mounted deer head that i'm is probably a reference to get out um lots of other spielberg references jaws is one of the biggest because like i said this is like upside down jaws you get the thing like that's hiding in the clouds and it, and sometimes it, you know it's in there but you can't really see it you can almost like, a lot of suspense <laughs> yeah and then you have much like the barrels in the water to track the shark they set up all of these wacky waving inflatable arm flailing tube men to uh which are powered by electricity so that they can tell where it's shutting off the electricity and tell mm-hmm. where in the sky it is loved the, also when they realized that that cloud has been sitting in the same spot for like six months and that's where it's hiding um something that jordan peele said was that to him clouds are very ominous yeah totally and that cl- he wanted to tap into this fear of kind of vertigo that he gets when a cloud is hanging too low and you're kind of like curious about what's going on with it he said to him, and I thought this was such a cool observation, he said clouds are kind of the first movies. Like yeah. ancient people would look at the clouds and tell stories about what the clouds looked like. That and stars really are like the, and you connect those things, the stars and the clouds in this movie. It's all about movies. Um, another reference that I thought was hilarious was the Scorpion King. Yes. Yes. So we find out right. that uh, their family worked on worked with horses for the Scorpion King. Then turns out they just used all camels for the movies. Mm-hmm. So they didn't even need them. So then, for uh, the majority of the the third act of this movie, OJ is wearing a an orange Scorpion King hoodie that's like a crew. crew on the back, which I think Stuckman pointed out in his review. There's uh, like you said about the Golden Hour and stuff. There's a lot that has in this movie that is like a love letter to the crew that works on movies and makes mm-hmm. movies happen including obviously the main characters being like crew 
you know, with yeah. the animal trainers and a cinematographer. But, you know, it's it's all about the people who come together to make movies happen. Even the AV guy. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. totally. Yeah. yeah. So it's all like a, it's just a love letter to everybody. And, and I saw and I'd have to verify this. And I don't know if other movies do this, too. But somebody made the observation watching the credits that it actually they actually credit each individual musician in the like who contributed to the score rather than just the name of the orchestra or whatever yeah. it's like each individual musician and what instrument they played that's pretty great so obviously there's a lot of respect there for the entire team not just jordan peele being like i did this all myself and i made right. this all myself and it's all me yeah i mean it's jordan peele's note but jordan peele encompasses a lot of fucking people mm-hmm. yeah and he's the same cinematographer on this i thought that the cinematography in get out and us but us especially is fantastic um and in this the nighttime scenes are absolutely gorgeous yeah you can actually see what's going on <laughs> yeah crazy right <laughs> any and then, complaints about any of this anything that didn't exactly work for you guys well uh, so uh, oh complaints from us uh, yeah there have been complaints about because i think the structure will put some people off it didn't put me off because i love a really? movie that yeah just because of the fact that it's broken up into segments that are named after the horses and it has like the up until the, the, the end, it seems to have a completely unrelated side story about the Gordy's home incident, and it's not really until the end when you can kind of start to piece together everything that you realize why it was there and what uh, it meant. There are critics that have that went on record saying that they thought that the connection between the two storylines was tenuous at best. I thoroughly disagree, having sat down and watched the film and had a conversation with two like-minded people about it. I feel like it's more connected than I even thought it was before I sat down in the chair today. Well, it gives credence to why Jupe is doing what he's doing. And it shows that it's cyclical. Like, this happened to him back in the day, and it's affected his life so much that he's kind of creating another situation that is trauma through spectacle, and the fact that that happened on a TV set lends into the whole theme of this movie. About Which draws more people and... in from the outside. And the fact that he is now trying to recapture that fame. So he got his 15 minutes and it didn't do much for him, right? He's mm-hmm. not a famous person now in the same sense that he was when that happened. Yeah. And so we're trying to recapture that moment when he maybe he's past his prime. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So that's stupid. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Once again, I, I, I wholeheartedly agree with the filmmaker in this case. I feel like the two are very well connected. Mm. Um, f- fuck. It'd be hard for me to hard press to find a complaint. I felt like the acting performances were great. Um, especially between Kaluuya and and Palmer, well, they were fantastic. That Kaluuya was just boring in this movie, but I think I, it was uh, he's a stoic character. Like he plays the character that is written for him exceptionally well. Well, and I think there's just a lot going on with his character that you can read in his eyes and the way that he is like awkwardly trying to deliver that speech in the beginning and the way that he interacts with his sister. And it adds tell, tension. Yeah, and you can tell where his emotion... And he's obviously dealing with the death of his father that he literally witnessed like right in front of him. And now he's just having to... Now he's having to take on all this responsibility of running a, bu- a business and running a ranch. That and, he had no interest in wanting to do. He wanted to train animals. Yeah, and taking care of these animals. Um, yeah, in terms of complaints... Um, I mean, while I was watching it, I was there was a little bit of like, okay, why is this structured the way that it is? And I wasn't really getting impatient because, like I said, the movie went by really quick. Um, but at the time, I felt like I might have a problem with it. But again, like just thinking about it and talking about it more, like it all comes together so well for me that while this, I mean, I think that it's going to be pretty much impossible for him to top Get Out. Yeah. I think that movie is probably just going to live as his masterpiece magnum opus movie but i liked this more than us and i so i can say the same thing and i i really liked us us covers a a, a category a category of, of cryptid that i that i find utterly fascinating which is doppelgangers mm-hmm. uh, i think that shit is fucking like terrifying and fascinating and like it's something that i could probably spend my life studying um and even that, I still feel like this ends up being a better film. It's a more complete film, which I think is pretty shocking. What um, about you? He, Did he, you? he does a good job for me, and I think it's kind of with all three of these, blending horror and then what people refer to as like thriller. Yeah. Where you, you get kind of this modern horror sensibility with this kind of Hitchcockian or Sterling sensibility and blending those two in a way that I think is enjoyable but sometimes feels like different movies right Mm -hmm. like the beginning of us feels different from the end of us the beginning of this feels different from the end of this and not that that's a necessarily bad thing but you can feel it you can feel the shift 
So I, but it's I, not. But it's still a good movie. He blends I, it well enough. I think that that's intentional, right? And I think that part of the reason why is be it's the same. It's you're following the character's journey here, mm-hmm. so you are terrified of the unknown entity that you're dealing with in this film at the beginning because you the don't UAP, know. UAP, which they have a whole little speech about. Mm-hmm. They talk yeah, about the it. release yeah. Pentagon yeah, stuff. Yeah, I was, I, was like, I was like, we talked about all like, this. And they were like, it's because nobody knows what the fucking uh, UAP was. Like, and we I, do. We I basically just turned shit. to Adrian and was just like, an, an unidentified aerial phenomenon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we did a whole episode about it. Um, <laughs> but we don't understand anything about this this creature at the beginning. So it's inherently and terrifying. And people fear what they don't understand. And as we get further into the film, it shifts to be less terrifying and more action packed and more, you know, about how do we, you know, get this shot and how do we defeat the creature kind right. of uh, mentality because we so you're know saying the more. shift makes sense. The shift makes sense because we as an audience learn about the creature at the same pace that the characters do. Yeah. They become a proxy for us essentially. Yes. Yeah. Um did, was there anything about the movie that didn't sit quite didn't really sit well with you or I don't think so. I mean I, I like I said I think the shift is noticeable and I I always want just like a straight horror movie. Mm-hmm. Um and so uh, the, but he it does it every time it draws me in because there was parts where I was like this is so fucking scary. Well even get out I was like is this really a horror movie? Yeah, I think yeah. the case could be made about almost any of these. Uh but which I think is totally I think f- horror yeah. is such an um, a nebulous umbrella term right. that at this point it's like dread yeah it's like there's there's so much stuff that falls under the horror umbrella and i think all three of these movies do but it's not there's nothing wrong with also no. injecting an adventure movie injecting a sci-fi movie injecting all this other stuff into it right um and this one feels like the most popcorn movie of any of his movies like in terms he's of he's made to three, a wider audience three wholly different movies that none and, of them and see. original movies yes. which is like who the fuck is doing that yeah. anymore Who's yeah, who, and who's letting people do that anymore? Yeah, yeah. The fact that he's able to make that he's made these three bangers and it doesn't look like there's any stopping him. Like he's probably going to continue making movies for. I, I will say, you've been on Twitter. I'm sure you've seen the guy who got raked over the coals by Peel himself. Yes. So there's a guy so who funny. who went to an early showing of Nope and was basically. Just, I felt so bad for this motherfucker. Oh too. yeah, he was just he was just talking about how fantastic all three of these films are mm-hmm. um, saying that basically uh, why have we not named Jordan Peele as the master of horror at this point because he's made three perfect well, his, films he let was alone like three at what point back. do we call him the greatest horror director of all time yeah so That's a big statement exactly yeah. so of course as Twitter does they tagged Jordan Peele incessantly about it and basically told this guy like you need to watch more movies what the fuck are you talking about listing like uh, Argento Carpenter like a bunch of people um, who have who have shit movies in their catalogs but, yeah, but let's be fair but, but have, have some of the greatest films that have ever right. been made, like like hands ever. down like genre making classics in their repertoire That's true. so Peele responds and he's like he's like I appreciate the sentiment but I'm gonna need you to put down your phone <laughs> and then uh, and then hits it up with a second one. He's like, I'm not going to sit here idly by and, le- and let you besmirch the name of John Carpenter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was awesome. And then, yeah, and that guy got bodied hard by his hero in that instance. Yeah. And I was like, fun that Jordan Peele is that accessible. And, can, and obviously you see that Jordan Peele doesn't think that highly of himself and that he obviously takes, has a passion for the craft. He has a passion for the craft, yeah. But also this guy was just trying to express how much he loved Jordan Peele's movies. And Which Twitter he's also destroyed right. him, yeah. like decimated this guy. So a lot of people were saying like, yeah, if I said something like that and then the director was like, no, put your phone away. I would probably just like delete Twitter and disappear. Like, just never, <laughs> just never come back. Just, just disappear into the into just the bushes. The the Thanos snap yourself. Yeah. Oh, one question that I did have for you guys was: How did you feel about the titles, the title cards in this movie? How it's broken up by like the names of the horses and Gordy. Like, what did you feel the meaning behind that was beyond just? I'd have to I, watch it again because I don't super remember. I know Ghost happened when we get the first. Him and then we get and then we get is it Jean Jacket is what they end up naming the yeah named after the horse that um M was supposed to train with her father but didn't get to I think that I I, so I love the symbolism behind using Jean Jacket Mm -hmm. because in the end M is the one that defeats them yeah so we didn't really talk about the ending so she does get the shot through the well yeah and then a bunch of people show a bunch of people show up at the end and she's like yeah I'm the one so we assume that she is gonna get. Her 15 minutes to some degree. She's going to get her Oprah moment. Yeah. 
Yeah, because she has, you know, a lot of people would ask like, well, I mean, you can fake any photo easily, but one, she has the benefit of it came out of this machine thing that's probably hard to fuck with. Two, mm-hmm. everybody already knows about the disappearance of like 60 people at this event here. Yeah. And then three, there were other people there who pro- who can now see this thing in the sky. So the fact that they'll probably report on this thing happening and then she'll have the legit like only photo of it basically. Yeah. And f- footage from yeah. before that event. Um, but again, it kind of begs the question, if this is an amb- uh, ambiguous ending, what lengths did she go to to get this? Where now her father's died, not her fault, right? But the cinematographer and possibly her brother died. Yeah. So that she could get this. Um, so I think that lends to the commentary, like what lengths people will go to. Yeah. To get their to get their time. Yeah. Doing a podcast for five years. Now it's like cut <laughs> cut it out, you know? Uh. <laughs> cut it out. <laughs> hey, I don't remember how that went. Hey, 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 we know we're not we're not chasing any fame. We're just having fun. Um, but man, I I dug the shit out of this movie. Um, I uh, I think we should rate it. Okay. Um, I let's do it out of five sunglasses at night. Yeah, I'll, I'll get us started. I will say four and a half. And I think that this movie has the potential to be a five, but I don't feel comfortable giving anything a five without having seen it again Mm -hmm. because opinions can change and spectacle from first watch uh, and hype can change an opinion, at least for me anyway. Um, But we had a hard time finding complaints, really. I mean, I'm sure there's little things that could be um, nitpicks, as as you typically say, John, Mm -hmm. but I think right now I would be comfortable out of four and a half uh, sunglasses. So for me, um, I'm pretty sure I'm on record on this show having given get both Get Out and Us fives. Um, if I think this movie is better than Us, I think that I have to reevaluate my rating of Us and give that a 4.5, and this is a 5 for me. Um, five? Five sunglasses at night. Thank you. Um, it's fantastic. Like I said, it is, it is a beautiful spectacle. Um, it blends horror and comedy and, and action sci-fi. and science fiction in ways that a lot of movies don't have the opportunity to do so. Um, I feel like Jordan Peele has punched his ticket to make whatever fucking movie he wants to make next, and I'll be there day one at the earliest showing they'll let me see it. I think that's a great point. Is And like you mentioned earlier, one of the best parts about this movie is that it is wholly original. It is what he wanted. He created the story Mm -hmm. and not saying that collaboration is a bad thing, but it's nice in the midst of all the Marvel. Well, and he was supposed to make a live action Akira, which I think is why there's the reference in this movie. And he Mm -hmm. turned it down specifically because he said he only wants to focus on working on original stories. Yeah. Which I I think is a mad respect. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I do think that if we're, if we're looking at the works of what would be considered our modern auteur directors, your Ari Aster's, your Robert Eggers and, and Peel, he's the most accessible by the widest margin possible. Um, but still makes movies that, like you said, are wholly original, are wholly the vision that he wanted to put forward, um, and just Accessible are commentaries and so conversable movies that you could talk with anybody about and have a valuable discussion about cinema and about life. Yeah, right on. All right, we totally. got. Um, I'm gonna give this a four sunglasses at night. Um, Pretty much for the same reason that that you said, which is room to grow. Uh, one, I'm a, I'm a little bit more conservative with half stars. Like I'll go from a four to a five, and that's probably what's going to happen when I rewatch this. But again, I want to save that for when I do rewatch it. But having had this conversation and seeing what other people are saying about this movie, um, I I can't wait to rewatch it. And Our reviews generally favorable. Yeah. Yes. This this on Letterboxd has a four, which is doesn't happen very often, even for like pretty good movies, and that means that generally people are giving it fours and fives. Um, I've seen very few complaints, and when people have complained about it on Twitter or whatever, they're just getting swarmed by people being like, "The fuck are you talking about?" Yeah, that's how the <laughs> internet works. But um, yeah, no, I I love this. I think Get Out has Get Out definitely has a five. I think Us. Um, has a four so i'll probably i've been meaning to rewatch us anyway i was thinking of rewatching it before this but um i yeah i fucking loved it i thought it was awesome um something that i forgot to mention before we stopped talking about this is that there was a big fan theory that the title nope was an acronym for not of planet earth 
oh, that's cool. And Jordan Peele said, nope. nope. <laughs> he was like, pretty much it was just me acknowledging what the audience says in those scary moments in horror movies when they see something scary and go, nope, which yep. multiple characters in this movie do and say the title of the movie. And I think some people might be put off by like his weird Kurt titles to things like get out us nope and i'm like no i, I think that's cool Fucking he's not it. just naming it the same shit that everything the the awakening the the exorcism of this and that but like, they all make sense yeah, it, yeah. it's get it's, out it's, it's, yeah, it's <laughs> he to almost the point. he almost called it little green men and i'm so happy that he didn't yeah that would have been whack well because yeah. it was supposed to be a commentary on like <laughs> What? <laughs> well, I think it was, he was saying it was going to be because there is commentary about how, like, you know, even the UFO in this looks. The reason that everybody thinks it's a spaceship is because culture and movies have taught them that this is what alien spaceships look like. And so they don't even think at first that it could be an animal. They just think it's a flying saucer. And so to, he was going to call it Little Green Men as, like, a reference to how Hollywood has given us this, like, idea of what aliens are. The greys now, I feel like, are what everyone thinks, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, well, they just came out with the gray man. Is that what that's about? No, it's an action movie. Uh, by the Russos. Yeah, I heard it's fucking awful, but oh, well. I'll check it out. But it's getting a sequel and a spinoff, so I guess it doesn't really matter. It's got some eye candy. But that's neither here nor there. That's going to wrap it up for our discussion on Nope. Uh, if you have opinions, then shoot them our way over on Instagram. We hope that you enjoyed that movie, and we hope that you enjoyed our discussion talking about it. We'll go ahead and get started with our Todd Browning Final Cut. What do you know? I asked for Final Cut. And I got it. All right, we are going to try to go through these pretty quick. So if you're not familiar, last year for the season finale, we did uh, an award show called the Todd Brownings. And we're going to do it again this year. So here are the nominees. And these will we'll be linking to these for you to vote, too. So don't yes. worry if you miss anything here while we're speed reading these. Um, th- these will all end up online, and I'll link to them on Instagram. Because yeah, they are so. they are a fan voted award ceremony, so uh, all of the so we will give you the nominations that we have for each of these categories, uh, and then from there you will have the opportunity to vote to make sure that your uh, that your favorite movie or actor or director are the ones that are selected. We felt like yeah. this was a better format than you know you know all of the you know the People's Choice Awards and things like that uh, because. You know, we're more akin to that than we are something like the Academy. Right. And if you are fans of the show, but you know people that don't necessarily watch the show or aren't fans of the show and you still want them just to vote anyway, send it to whoever. I always send it to people. I'm like, here, can you just vote? Just pick shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just so th- it kind of adds a little fun element to it. So, and I think the out. only qualifier we really need is that the stuff that's in, the stuff that is in these categories is not every single thing that's come out in the last year or whatever. It's specifically things that we covered on this season of the show. So this has been new. Yeah, so the awards show is also kind of acting like a season recap for us to kind of go through everything that we've talked about and put them into categories. So yeah. let's let's read through them. Cool, here we go. Best new horror movie. We got X. We have Men. <laughs> we have Scream, a.k.a. Five. We have Nope. And we have The Black Phone. So once again, that is best new horror movie. Uh, for best new sci-fi movie, we have Spider-Man No Way Home. Everything, Everywhere, All at Once. <laughs> Dune, <laughs> The Batman, and Ghostbusters Afterlife. Solid. Best new sci-fi. For best TV series slash miniseries, we have the Chuckster, old Chucky. Fucking Chucky. We have <laughs> Stranger Things 4, Obi-Wan Kenobi, Midnight Mass, <clears throat> and Moon Knight. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Next up, we got best directing. We have Daniels from Everything Everywhere All at Once, Denis Villeneuve from Dune, Jordan Peele for Nope, Alex Garland for Men, and Ty West for X in the best directing category. Uh, one of my favorite categories, we have best kill. We have uh, uh, Omleth beheads Fjolnir uh, in The Northman. Uh, we have uh, Ghostface stabs Dewey. Spoiler alert! Um, from Scream <laughs> yeah. Five, uh, we have Gordy's rampage from Nope. Uh, continuing with the spoiler alert from previously, um, and then where did it go? Uh, we have uh, Chrissy's death from uh, Stranger Things Four, Episode One. Uh, man, that shit was scary the first time. Uh, we have <laughs> uh, Pearl's first kill in front of the van in X, uh, and then we have the bus massacre from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Solid picks from yeah. every, from all those categories. I mean, for that category. Yeah. Definitely. And then for best performance by an actor, we have Rory Kinnear from Men. We have 
uh, as it says here, Evan McGregor, but I'm, <laughs> I'm going to say uh, auto, that's, auto correct. that's Ewan McGregor for Obi-Wan Kenobi, Oscar Isaacs for Moon Knight, Andrew Garfield for Spider-Man No Way Home, and Ki Hu Kwan from Everything Everywhere All at Once. Wayman. Wayman. All right. Then for best performance from an actress, we have Michelle, how you say it? Yao? Yo. Yo. From Everything Everywhere All at Once, Sadie Sink from Stranger Things, Kate Siegel from Midnight Mass, Jesse Buckley from Men, and Kiki Palmer from Nope. For our most surprising films of the year, we have uh, films or projects from the year. We have uh, Everything Everywhere All at Once, Scream 5, Chucky, The Black Phone, and Ghostbusters Afterlife. For the... Uh, most uh, we're not mad. We're just most disappointed <laughs> films. Yeah, so the, our dad category. Yeah, the most Daddy disappointing Gordy. films of the year: Halloween Kills, or of the season, I guess. Halloween Kills, Lamb, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre from 2022, Nightmare Alley, Book of Boba Fett, and The Matrix Resurrections. Yeah. That's a good one. So we, right. made, we made that a separate category from this next category, which is... The worst of the year. So maybe not necessarily disappointing, it's just bad all around. And that includes Halloween Kills, Resident Evil Welcome to Raccoon City, Lamb, the 2022 Texas, Texas Chainsaw... God damn it. <laughs> you, did, you did the thing. <laughs> Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Morbius... <laughs> Uh, it's morbid Mor- time. Morbius, and then Morbius. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Jurassic World Dominion, and then Firestar. Too. Yeah, and then we will also be announcing... Uh, Who is the trivia winner for the season. Yeah, so yep. awesome categories. Like I said, if you miss any of that while we were rattling off, this will all be in print in a survey format for you to vote on. So please do vote. We got a good uh, turnout for last year, and we have an even bigger audience of listeners and people who are involved on our social media this year. So I will be peer pressuring you all to vote in this. And like Tone said... Even if you have you know people who uh, don't listen to the show or don't give a shit, have them vote because we want to <laughs> know their opinion. And um, once again, this isn't everything that came out. This isn't everything everywhere all at once. Mm-hmm. But that, sh- that should win every category that's in. <laughs> so. <laughs> Just might. But yeah, might on, could. on uh, might could. so on, is it going to be the next episode that we're doing the actual awards? Is that next episode? No. Uh, the, so we'll. No, we'll do them we'll on give the... it some time, right? Yeah, yeah. it'll be that's only why I was asking is like how it'll be our know. last episode next yeah. week. I think we're gonna start Predator. Yeah, yeah, I think that's the plan. Yeah, so we will be diving into. We just want to tackle them all in a week. Let's do it. Yeah, why not? <laughs> well, I guess. All right. Yeah, fuck it. We're gonna do it. So that'll be Predator, 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 Predator Two, Predators, Predators, and then and the, the Predator. Predator. <laughs> Who very very confusing names. yeah and i think we're gonna leave out the avp movies or are we gonna put those yeah in? we've already covered them and yeah. they yeah. don't i think they don't actually count in the yeah storyline so just the they're four own, movies their own thing in anticipation for the new prey dropping on hulu at the beginning of august so we want to have all of our predator knowledge sealed in signed sealed delivered yeah, yeah plus as a franchise we feel like we should cover so yeah absolutely All right, well, thanks again for checking this episode out, whether you're listening or watching or both, and we appreciate everything that you do. If you could subscribe or whatever the fuck, then we would appreciate (laughs) it even more. We have gotten a bunch of new subscribers over on YouTube lately, which has been really cool. 64, so... Yeah, uh, thank you for everyone that's been doing that. Let's get to a hundo, guys. That'd be great. (laughs) Before the end of the year, maybe. Um, and also, just a reminder, again, like John said earlier, check out the Chuck and Ruff Go to the, Goes to the Movies episode that we did for Christmas in July for Nightmare Before Christmas that is available currently by the time you're listening to this. So go check that out on your feeds. Perfect. We'll see you next time. I've been Tone. I've been John. And I wear my sunglasses at Internet Darling <laughs> Anthony. <laughs> the Suck Man. <laughs> the Suck Man. <laughs> Dude, hood bat shit. <laughs> Why don't you click right here and get suckmanized? <laughs> Keep it creepy. Exclusive episodes, early access, merch, and to support the show, head over to patreon.com forward slash porcelain peak. 
Thanks to all our patrons for the support, and special thanks to producers Chuck, Rob, Ashley, and Michael. You can find Porcelain Peak on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, and TuneIn. Wherever you listen, don't forget to rate, review, share, and subscribe so you never miss a thrilling episode. Special thanks to Roger Jackson for introducing the show, and to Jeff For Real for composing the Porcelain Peak opening and closing song. All content and episodes are written, produced, designed, and edited by the Porcelain Peak team, consisting of Anthony Perez, John Brasher, and Anthony Silva. This has been here for this fair weirdos production.